talking about flashing lights, baby. Flashing lights everywhere. Niggas was saying shit about me, they didn't even fucking know me. This is my school. This is what I was doing with what nobody looking. Y'all don't know what goes on in practice or the locker room. Welcome back to Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoa, whoa! whoa. What's today, Tuesday? To Taco Tuesday. Ooh. Taco Tuesday. We got some tacos? No, we don't have none. Okay, okay. no. Diaz. We got yeah, 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 yeah. We do? Diaz, though. It's like okay. a wrap taco. <laughs> Folding <laughs> taco. What's going on, though? This is Gills Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. As always, we got the legend Gilbert Arenas here with us. What it do? We got Lexi Brown back on the couch. Big things happening. We will talk about later in the show. Mm -hmm. You don't want to give away too much. <laughs> too soon. And we got Rashad McCann's back here with us, representing for the Bay. Absolutely. In the work shirt. workshop jacket, shirt. Mm -hmm. Workers' comp. I'm going to hit it. <laughs> Workers' comp. <laughs> 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 What's <laughs> wrong with you? Comes, comes as a package deal. Got the coordinate. That's, <laughs> this is coordination at its finest. Do you think of these shirts and then make them immediately, or do you make them all at once? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> you know you never go get What type of work on with, you know what I'm saying? like, yeah, this you is... You just be good. laying there and you're like, I got enough. Yeah, I need some insurance. I need some insurance today. I need... I'm working too hard. It's all work motivated. <laughs> work, work yeah. Sometimes I need work, work ethic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes I need some motivation. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I got just too much workload. It's too much. The workload. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I need a work release, man. So it's just a lot. There is a lot, and we're going to cover all the bases. That's clever. I like it. Yeah. Work yeah. release program. Work release program. <laughs> oh, boy. Please. Enough. It's another beautiful <laughs> day in the arena. I'm going to be sweating by the end of this stuff. <laughs> I already know. <laughs> Shit. It is Black History Month, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate y'all pulling up to the show with us. Here's what's cracking in the arena today. Freak time hasn't quite lived up to expectations just yet, but Dame keeps it real on how off-court issues can impact on-court performance. Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs are 14-1 and in their last 15 games. But are they for real or fugazi? Shout out to all the Cavs fans that have been hitting us up on social. Literally. Every day. Every day. Like, Why are you talking about the Cavs? I got Why the same shit I got. We all getting I'm tagged like, in it. We see you. We see you. You got nigga. your wish. We are talking some Cavs today. <laughs> and Clay Thompson has been struggling this season. But is this his last dance with the Warriors? We're going we're gonna to show that uh, post-game interview he did last night. It was... It was a little sad, I ain't gonna lie. It was kind of a little sad, wasn't it? Damn, it was Clay. Very sad. Yeah. We still believe in you, Clay. It was, it was like cringe sad, like, ugh, don't do that. Draymond in the back. He <laughs> <laughs> happy as <laughs> Anything for you. <laughs> but before we get into all that, as always, the show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. If you have not done so already, download the app, use promo code GILL, and Underdog Fantasy will match your first deposit up to $100. Help keep this show on the air, help keep Underdog Fantasy happy. Use the app. They got pickums going. We got the big game coming up this weekend. We got NBA. We got college basketball. Everything. Get them pickups going. Download the app. Promo code Gill. Support Underdog Fantasy so we can keep supporting y'all with y'all favorite basketball show. And as always, we do mostly fans at the end of every show. If you drop a good question in the chat with your Underdog Fantasy username and we use it on the show, we will give you a $50 bonus. If you send us a video, mostlyfansgill at gmail.com. And keep it under 30 seconds, and we use it on the show. We will give you a hundred dollar bonus. As a reminder, when you're making these uh, mostly fan videos, please pull the car over, put it in park. <laughs> please. We understand multitasking. It's this is well, raining. In LA. You're in LA. It's El Negro outside. Like, just keep stay safe. Please, just pull the car over. Oh, shit. the house hasn't flooded this year. Mm. Does it normally flood? Yes. Oh. Because uh, fall. You know, like the leaves fall, and then it. Oh yeah, it clogs it, it clogs it up, and then when it gets raining, then they the water starts finding its way. Now I'm sitting there 
looking like a hunted mansion, sitting there flooding. And <laughs> now, <laughs> this y'all smart. Right before it was like, hold on, let me get them gutters clean. Smooth selling. Mm. Oh, Yo, did you clean the gutters or did somebody clean them for you? I mean, if you know anything that, you know, if you think about like Home Depot, right, they have this like, Outside program. Don't stop it. Stop There's it. like outside program where you know some of the hey, workers hey, not support, inside support the outside. Need some help. Right? <laughs> right? you, you know, you pay them cash. You know, huh? So you they not, support the community. We're not doing this. Okay, that's just wanted to make sure. They support Gil Gilbert, a man of the people, housework. supporting the community. Housework. No. Get on the roof. Yeah, be a man. The roof. That's not manly. It's man things. That's not man thing. It is manly. Changing tires. That's not man thing. That's it mechanic shit. Building yeah. a house. Man shit. Mm. Mechanic shit. Mm -hmm. House builders. Mm -hmm. You gotta get it right, Lex. Pay to play. <laughs> hey, is this what is this what you do? Here you go. Support your local community. This is what you do. You, you this is what you do. You you build shit. Like, build I don't even it. get an oil change. Oh, you just like me for real. Yeah. You better come <laughs> get this shit. <laughs> just like me for real. Dad, help. <laughs> Pops, what's up? How do you do this? They said I need all of these things done. No. Send it. Oh, that's how they get. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, go, I go by myself. Can I have my oil changed? They come back. It's 17 other things. Dad, mm. here. Mm. I know him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Just oh, your oil. Oh, <laughs> they try to get you. Thousand. They be trying to upgrade you with no reason. The upsell game is real. Gil, what is the most difficult home improvement task that you've taken on? Um, I know you done built a light fixture or something. You done fix not, not anything that has to do with, like, putting something together. Okay. Right? Like, like let's say, like, a knob falls. I'm, like, one of my drawers is, like, it unhooks. And every time, like, one of the kids pull it too hard and it unhooks, I can't even, I can't even put it together. I don't, to be honest, I don't take the time to even think on how to make it. I just sit it there and wait for the maids to come put this shit back together. <laughs> I just put it to the side. I mean, some of y'all I'm seeing in just this random door just sitting to the side on the wall. That's the maid's job. Wait, uh, wait. Click that shit back in. <laughs> like, I'm not going to frustrate myself trying to put, I'm sorry, lady. I'm not going to frustrate the shit out of myself. So you, can't, you don't put together, like, drawers or tables? I didn't, I didn't do workshop in, in high school. <laughs> from Ikea. I can follow it, but just like anybody, you start reading and you start just pretending like, eh, I got it, I got it. And then you try to do this shit yourself. Like, no. Not I. <laughs> not like, I, I. Not yeah. I. I'm not reading word for word. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. They call me McCann's the mechanic. For real? Oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. Uh, everything in my crib, I built up. Couch, a little, uh, I got the... The nice little, uh, under the TV, you call it the little TV stand. Bar, the bar? But it got the, the LED fireplace. Yeah. I put all that shit together. Bed, everything. Ooh. Okay. The bed? Yeah, whole bed. Yeah, they get like, like the screws and shit? Everything. Okay, manly man. I sit there for a couple hours and do that shit. I love that shit. Like, the, you put the bed The whole together. bed, the nigga, the, the, everything around the bed. They give you just two boxes. You I, be like, this I, is the bed. I put my bed together in college. I don't even make my bed. You got to put a bed together? <laughs> you got to furnish my apartment. So I went to the store, got me a little bed thing, and I put it together. Mm -hmm. I like respect from the it. Yes. Ooh. Like, no, nah, I just get in my bed. I sleep right at the edge so I can just fold it back. Just boom. Because if I, like, sleep wild and I got to, like, not try to put it all together again, hell no. Nah. Well, I had a father. I had a single father. So I'm a little different. I had a single father who had to be a man. So he had to do man shit which left me not doing nothing, right? So he had to cook <laughs> and clean, take out the trash. So I had to do nothing. So I don't know how to do nothing. You're supposed to be like <laughs> Trey, though. Yeah, Rake the leaves. Like me. Rake the leaves. <laughs> I was raised <laughs> like you. I was raised like you. Raised in the gated community, shit. I had you, to build, hey, the, hey, you, build hey. the fire. I had to figure out fire. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, fire warm, yes. <laughs> hey, no, I'm saying, you date me, we both looking at each other when the trash is full. Mm, who gonna take it out? Okay. <laughs> Man, I'm not gonna, okay. You ever been to a trash can? Flies and shit coming out of it. You supposed, I'm supposed to lift it up and throw the hell down. Nah. They're used to the flies. I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure she doesn't notice that y'all leave the food here. When you come back in the morning, it's still there. Right? I know y'all have noticed that. So we've been eating leftovers nah, for three days, no, when she, when, no, when she comes, she don't have to take it out there, throw it in the trash, and bring the new oh, one so in. Because I'm the day. not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure she's noticed by now. <laughs> 
<laughs> we not doing nothing. I go now. right in there like three times. Like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to the trash can on this one. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There be like little coyotes out there in the morning. Hell, no. I be the last. Yeah, I be the last thing you try to eat. Well, we embrace the roaches and the flies. They got cousins. What's Ooh. up, Ooh. Edgar? What you doing over there? <laughs> he walking around and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, another day scare me. in the arena, as you know. We talk basketball, we talk life, we talk a little bit of everything. So <laughs> let's get into it. Uh, Playboy Cardi pulled up to Aiden Ross's stream, oh, ignored him, and literally danced around almost every question that he was asked, and alleged, allegedly left with a $2 million bag in six minutes, a record in real. No way. Very real. First of all, this is the second time I've seen that boy on the stream. What a rapper. Getting finesse. Some weird he got finesse, finesse by 21 Savage with the Mark Who Cards. Is that? Aiden Ross. Who is that? Big in the streaming community, making millions and millions of dollars. Just or what? Streaming. Kick just right sitting now. in front of the camera. Just streaming. He doesn't like so, play video games or nothing? No. Okay, so mm -mm. they have changed like streaming, video game streaming, because they've gotten so big where they've added celebrities to their live streams right. of playing video games and doing. So they have evolved into something that's totally different. So just being a regular video game streamer, you can't even compete with these dudes because right. you video game streaming, they'll be like, where's Drake? Yeah, you like, nigga, I got Nicki Minaj yeah, on I got, I got 200 like, followers, bro. I just, I just can't hit and play the video game, bro. I just want to play Fortnite. <laughs> I can send my mom in here. <laughs> Yeah, he had Nikki, he had yeah, Offset on there. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, what, what, so what he got going on? You just. He just gave away $2 million. So re reports are he only gave him half the bread and then uh, was supposed to give him a private plane to A million dollars? Jet. So he gave him a million dollars cash? Gave him a mil. But uh, in response to the backlash, they're supposed to be doing a part two. Wait, yeah, what? Yeah, because he what? canceled. He'll, he'll, he can cancel Playboy Party. He can okay. cancel. Uh, give me a mil. I, you, you'll never see me again. Yeah, I'll be trying to rob you when you go to sleep. But. Okay, I'm sorry, but are we going to just be honest here? It's, how, how much is a play... Uh, to book Playboy Cardi for a show? 100K, maybe. 100K. Maybe. 100K. Maybe a little more than that, yeah. Okay, 200. 250. How about this? Let's give him 500. 500. We'll do 500. I will do 500 just for shits and giggles. 500,000 for him to do a two hour show. Right. And you telling me I'm going to pay him $2 million or he going to come on my live stream with a mask on and not answer no questions? Really? Stop. Let's just stop. The, the money is the gimmick of it all, right? I'm going to give you this bag of money. Like, I'm going to give you this bag of money. It, it makes it seem like an amazing thing, right? The, the money is the flashpoint. The, the money is the... Um, you think people really believe that this, that this money is just being handed over like that? People believe it, yes. Cause I, so I was at the Grove with my friend, and one of the little TikTok people came up to us and was like, it was the little with the mic. If you get this right, we'll give you ten thousand dollars. So me and Nikki, who was who was my friend that was with me, was like, "Oh yeah, I bet." Tell, ask us the question. Tells us the answer before we start filming, and it's fake. The money is fake. Prop, prop money. But he posted a video, four million views, and people are like, "Oh my god!" Like, he monetized off that, and y'all still ain't get bread. I know, because then he was like, "Y'all want to do another?" No, I don't. So, As I said, people I ain't, like y'all ain't tag us. Nothing. <laughs> we got nothing from this video, but they're making so much money. Just it's, lying. It's, it's lying. It's, it's crazy. It's, but what's, what's what's the easiest bag finesse that you've ever pulled? That the, 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 I'm him? About, oh, I'm talking about him. About him. That's the biggest bag finesse because he gets all the views from it. Because there's no way. I, I don't know if, how much money you've tried to take out of a bank. At one time. There's no there's no way in hell that he could have he could have went to the bank and took out two million dollars that easy. It takes like a few days though. It you have to order it. Yeah, you gotta order it. I'm you have to order days. it. They have to ship it to you. Then you have to go through so many questions of what are you doing with this money? Where are you because it's money laundering. They want to make sure you're not money laundering, right? Now, hence the kicker. You're giving it to him. What do you think happens to Playboy Cardi if he got a real $2 million? And he get on the jet and... Right, $2 million? Oh, my God, IRS is on his ass. What you doing with this money? Where you going with this money? Are you, you going to deport this money? Because cash is the worst thing that you can do to give someone because Aiden Ross can write it off as what? An expense. An expense, <laughs> right? So it didn't cost him $2 million. You give it to him, right? 
He didn't get two million. He only got a million. Now, if he don't claim that money, IRS is gonna tax him anyway for it. He donated so it. Yep. He can donate that money. That's literally a donation for him. He can say, hey, yeah, like, I donated that so from my foundation yeah. to the Playboy Cardi I'm merely home, host, homeless kid. Most then, money I've withdrawn from a bank is about $100, Gil. No, but I'm just saying, like, it's just, this is just splash. Even with the 21 Savage we didn't pay attention to, that's just, that's just, that's the clickbait of it all. Oh, you got cheated. Oh, really? So I should save, I should save my take on it being some nigga shit. Yeah. Cause it kind of like some nigga, like why well, we can't even really. You could, you could, you could, you could lose, use that take later in the show. Shit, for sure. man, just like some nigga. <laughs> but him and Twenty One Savage, Bo, y'all doing some nigga shit, man. Let, let's get into some basketball. Uh, Knicks point guard Ryan Archie Diacono. I said it right. Nice. Yes. Let's go. All right, Gil. Now you say it. I didn't even hear what he said. I just heard Nick. Ryan Archie Diacono, Gil. <laughs> just, heard Nick. <laughs> just heard Nick's. Just heard Nick's. All right, cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I heard Nick's. Whatever. Give me some coffee. Whatever. Nick's, <laughs> whatever. Gil, in the beef, all right? Nick's fans, fine people. Shout out to Kim Merrill. Shout out Spike Lee. Shout out Ben Stiller. In the beef, Gil. We got to go to New York at some point. I'm going to do that because Steve. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got some Knicks fans in the building. But Knicks point guard Ryan, Ryan Archie Diacono is making history for all the wrong reasons. So, first player in NBA history to play 20 consecutive games without scoring a single point. I love <laughs> Put those three fingers down, Chief, and that's, that's how much you scored. He actually played? That's how he plays? How does someone find the stat? Well, I'm surprised you didn't even throw extra stats in here. Yeah, why are you always coming at me? No, I'm just saying because usually you would have added in, you know. On a Wednesday with, nah, with no without turnovers. A, yeah, no, no, without a block, right? <laughs> yeah. In 20 games, without a free throw in 20 games, obviously, right? If he ain't made a point, he ain't made a free throw either, so you get to throw that in there yep. with threes. So eventually at some point, with all the stats combined, he's the only player in history who would ever do this again. Man, Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Right, if you don't have no points, if you don't have a, re, a block or something, like no... Yeah, he gets to be the only person ever to ever do this if you add the rest of the but stats. But you just separate those stats. You yeah. separate the first player, no points, no free throws. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. He does only average two minutes a game. He played 45 minutes a season. Again, I am merely a host, Gil. I just conveyed the stats as they are presented to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You could do something in two minutes. But you can. You, yes, you can. get a bucket. But he, yeah. he's, getting in on the, uh, he's getting in on the will sign trend like everybody else. <laughs> no, no, no. What would be funny if he actually did it? For sure. If he actually did it, if he did it, that makes it funnier. Now, that's, that would be legendary, but shout out to our, our expert oh, pr production team. <laughs> so if I'm he, him, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, probably didn't know he was the most outstanding player back in NCAA tournament out of Villanova. So, his former college and current Knicks teammate, Josh Hart, took some time to recognize the record <laughs> in the history books. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Cold blooded. It's like they college team and the pros, like they just joke around mm -hmm. all day. All so, they do is play around. So Rashad, we'll start with you. Uh, what's the worst slump you had in your career, on or off the court? Slump. Slump. These are difficult questions, man. You don't slump. I don't slump. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no slumping over here. I'm living the pump. We get pumps in the gym, pumps in the bumps. No off the court slumps. Mm mm. No I mean, recent, recently, okay. recently, yeah. just because of the, it's just going back and forth with, with Gil, man, being out there in the public eye, it's like, <laughs> you fucking with Gilbert, and, you know, the work started deleting me and blocking <laughs> work me. started to leave. Getting the work, <laughs> I have a work slump, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm lonely over there, trying to get this hen <laughs> shit don't work no more. It's, it's hard. It's hard. Oh, the blue Rhino. Yeah, man, OnlyFans ain't working, they ain't responding back. <laughs> I know how tough it is out there for y'all. It's tough. Oh tough. I get it. So, Lexi, what's the worst slump you had in your career on or off the court? Um, I mean, probably my rookie season. I like I didn't even play, so it wasn't a slump, but you just show up every game day and you just sit on the bench and clap and cheer and then you get thrown in randomly and get yelled at for not doing your job, even though I haven't been on the court in five days. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't be a slump, but that was just a low point. And my obviously your percentages reflect that. So like I was shooting like twenty percent from three and shit. Like, Damn. Well, it was just bad. 
like shooting two threes in a game a week. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's tough. <laughs> it's annoying. Yeah. And people don't realize that goes to your overall yeah, three point shooting so percentage. I've had two seasons of barely playing. <laughs> have been like 30% and below from the three. So it's like fucked up my overall three point percent. And then people judge you by, look, look, you didn't even shoot this for your career. Yeah. Are so you? My career right now I'm looking is 36.5. And that's what two seasons of 27 and 24. And that's what happened my, my second year. I got hurt, microfracture, I was coming back. And it was like halfway through the season. And I barely played because I was still kind of injured and still shot like 20. 22%. Yeah. Like as a shooter, anything under 35% yeah. is it's not. It's trash. Well, yeah. as, a, as an expert in bench warming, uh, what a lot of people don't realize is we do not want to get in the game. That's uh, <laughs> to, no. to fuck up this. Yeah, you don't, don't wanna, fuck my shit. Don't fuck up. When I'm, I'm going to do it two minutes. Man. <laughs> and it's the game average. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to do? But you got to be efficient. Because it's like, I hear that, but also, like, I know that. At the end of the game, if we're losing, the other team is gonna kind of let us do shit. Yeah. You get a couple free throws, get a couple layups, open shots. Ain't nobody contesting shit. Everybody in there like we we don't even want to be in here. Me, oh yeah, give me that bitch. I'm shooting that bitch. The key is to make deals with a player on the other team. Let me shoot. <laughs> oh no no, we I'll do let that. You shoot. Oh for sure. The game has yeah, already been decided. The game is over. You get put in for that last like minute fifteen. You're just like. Oh, I'll tell them, you better move out of my way, my yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, that's why my percentages was so low, because I was putting that shit up. No, that's what ends up happening. Like, you get judged by your overall, like, yeah, you only average this against this person. Well, are you counting my first two years, too? Because you know I only got in uh, three and a half seconds one game, Yes. two minutes of the game. That becomes a full game, so that's zero and zero. So that's if I why. scored 21 game and then zero and zero, God damn it, I'm at 6.5. <laughs> I'm at 6.5 for the so year. You have, no, you have all these games of the year, then you have a really good game. It don't matter. It don't matter. It's averaging. Per 36, per 48. Yeah, like In them college, my per 40, very, 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 very splendid. Like Just So like this, this 20 games right here, all the shots he missed is going to be part of his overall average. 100%. And he's been put in one game. Get in. Like I've been sitting here for 38 game minutes, an hour something like this. The, the, the last time I shot the basketball or touched that, three hours ago. right? It was three hours ago. <laughs> so when I get in and I get my first shot, one, hell yeah, I'm about to chuck this shit. Two, am I gonna make it? Probably not, right? It's the first. <laughs> this shit feels foreign. <laughs> very, very. I've been drinking water and clapping hands all day. God damn it, no, I don't. Thighs hurting. Hey, thighs hurting. Once I learned the, the, the method of it, I became notorious. Or they they would look at the little stat sheet after the game, like, damn, shot played four minutes and shot the ball ten times. Yeah. God, <laughs> <damn>. <laughs> he shot that bitch ten yeah. times, like every single time down. Don't y'all even look at me. Yeah. Don't look at me. I, I start ain't... putting the heat pack. I look, I start, hey, start getting one, start putting the heat pack. Like, you know how they put it on your knees? Mm -mm. Like that'll put it on my arm. I used to be just warm yeah. my hands. Yeah, yeah put it on my arm. I need you, I need you warm as soon as we get in. Yeah, the cold we, hands is the work. Cold yeah. hands is the, the work. Uh, God. Damn. God damn. We got 35 seconds, we got Two shot attempts, yes, yes. It's also bad when you get put in and the other team still got they good players in. Fact. Now what do you want me to do with that? They yeah. are, I'm playing against starters now. The they starters, are good. but they've been running, they warm, so. I'm about to show you. Yeah. I'm about to show you what I'm going to do. <laughs> they about to find out what I'm going to do. I'm going to shoot that bitch. Yeah. So if you hoop long enough, uh, at some point you're going to have some embarrassing moments. Uh, <laughs> like this one right here. Oh, no. Okay, watch this unity. Women supporting women. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's coming. There it is. Oh. Uh oh. oh. Fell something. off. Okay, but. Oh, no. Team effort, both sides. Watch how they gather around her. Oh, no. And, Let's and get it. Let's... Oh, she lo lost I her love whole this hat. so much. All of the both teams? Yes. Teamwork. Love it. <laughs> she didn't even break her ankle or nothing. <laughs> Watch, watch Don Staley. Uh, don't, First of all, look how early in the game she is. I didn't even notice. Don Staley don't know what's going on. Don is like, Don't know. Huh? Then finds out. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But that, like, that's, re that's reasonable. She's like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Uh, that was beautiful. So, Lexi, uh, you, you tweeted, uh, I swear this is my biggest fear, but shout out to the girls for helping sis out. Man. What's the wildest malfunction you've ever seen that, on a basketball? Something very similar is that to that. The, you seen it in game? Oh, it oh no, out. it was in a workout. Okay. 
So I, I literally had just got my hair done and I didn't just, for some reason I didn't tie it down and I felt it just slide back. And then my trainer just stared at me and I was like, I just ran to the bathroom and I tied it down. It was fine, but I was Damn, like- Damn, lost the whole sunroof, huh? Let's ignore <laughs> this. You didn't see anything. I didn't even acknowledge it when I came back in. I was just like, okay. Not the sunroof. <laughs> the sun just lost the whole top. It just slid. I felt it too. I was like, oh no. I'm Never just, hasn't happened since. That was like a, three years ago. I just have a question. Like, what's what's the benefit of that? Like, of what? Like having that, like having as an as an op, as an obstacle, extra hair that can come off, like that. I mean, I don't know. Like, like if we playing and I had the flat top. Well, and there's, found me there and the flat ways, top flew off. There are many Steve ways Harvey. to make sure that doesn't happen. So the fact that that happened a is man kind unit. of insane. Yeah. It's, there's so many ways now for that to never happen. But even one time in Chicago, I had on a, like a fake long ponytail. I, wasn't, I was trying to be cute. I didn't think I was going to get in the game. <laughs> just got in the game. So the whole game, I'm just worried <laughs> Me were you? Were you? I was just like doing. My mom was like, "Why you?" She texted me, "Why you keep touching your hair in the game?" Keep touching the hair. I was like, mom, but I don't know if it was secure enough. It was though. And I got some really cute pictures. <laughs> in game pics. That's the most. I like, got some fire in game pics. <laughs> but yeah, I was a little nervous. I mean, in fact, I just want to see one, just one player, just like they sitting there talking trash, and it's just you know what. Ah. And then just go to work. <laughs> right, they just lie, you know what? Take it off and then just ah. I'm about to get the business. Yeah, I'm about to, yeah, yeah. You've been talking shit. All right. Mm-hmm. Boop, 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 boop. Ah. Hit it with the. Enough. I mean, that'd be fun. That'd be funny, though. <laughs> you know that super center, like, oh, like, that's super. That's like, think about, you know, like, you know, like, night, 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 you know, night, night, you take Listen, it off. Take ah. it off. Ah. Ah. Can, can you get off and throw it in somebody's yeah. face on the break? Like yeah. a headband. Hey, man. <laughs> Damn. Hair is expensive. I don't know if anybody will just throw it. So, like, I'm surprised they don't wear headbands just to make sure it don't. They do, so I don't know how that happens. <laughs> you know, oh. things happen, but shout out to South Carolina and yeah, Ole Miss. That was a beautiful moment. Uniting in a beautiful moment <laughs> in harmonious <laughs> basketball <laughs> exhibition. So, Ashada Gill, what's the most uh, embarrassing moment in your sports career? You go first. All right. I mean, uh, Clippers. So, uh, okay, so. I've said it before, but, you know, uh, back then, you know, shaving. So, you know, my girl used to, you know, women shave. So I just thought, you know, cleaning up the man area was a thing to do, right? Because uh, it kind of makes it look a little bigger than it's supposed to be, right? So, right, you know, so I end up getting, like, keloid bumps from the rusty r- razor. So um, the team doctor had to give me this little ointment, right, uh, that burned off the keloids. So what happens is in three days, it's supposed to burn off and you just dab it. Well, unfortunately, obviously I'm young. I, I don't know what dab means. So I just rub it in like lotion. Woo, whole side. It burned all my skin off. <gasps> burned all my skin off. So we're playing the Clippers in LA and I'm sitting there shaved all of this. So I had to put baby powder Right, to make it feel good. So now think about it. How much baby powder you think my dumb ass put into the thing? Right? So I'm just spraying the whole bottle so I didn't feel the pain, right? And then, like, it's leaking out the bottom of it. So I decided, shit, just put tape. So I'd, like, do the, like, you know, the, you know, so, like, you know, like the tape for the ankles? I did that around here so it wouldn't leak out, right? <laughs> I'm digging that safe. So I'm in the game, right? Tried to do something and got hit, boom, and fell. <laughs> <laughs> all, 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 all baby story. powder smoke. Poof. <laughs> Everybody slipping on the floor because they didn't know what the hell was going on. So think about baby powder on the floor. People were slipping, so they were trying to figure out what. So I had to go back, change everything, and mm. yeah. Rashad, can you top Ridiculous that? Story, I, can't top that. Okay. <laughs> I can't top that. I can't. I can't top that. What's your, but what's your most embarrassing moment in your sports career? Most embarrassing moments. Um, so for me, it's always been fast break. Right. I always wanted to do the windmill. <laughs> All right, fast break. It's always been my little dream. Like when I get my wind, when I get my fast break, I'm gonna do something nasty. Cause I had bounce. I could do whatever. 
windmill was always the nicest dunk to do. Mm -hmm. And I did my windmill different. Like everybody does their sideways. I did mine this way, like kind of like Jason Richardson. Mm -hmm. did, right? yeah. So I'm on the break, Carolina. I think we were playing against Maryland. And a glory moment, everybody stood up. I'm like, yes, here it go. <laughs> Got up there. Man, hung. Damn. Fell. Oh, the, oh, the hanging with the fell. Phone. Now, usually when you, when you get hung, they go on the other side, you go down, you get back on defense. No, nah, we didn't get that opportunity. <laughs> we kept the ball on this end of the floor, which then coach is just pissed. Fucking sub me out and everything. So I had to live in that moment. Everybody laughing in the student section because everything <laughs> right there is just laughing at me. And I'm just like, that's going to be Sports Center for sure. <laughs> for sure. And damn sure it was sure. Sports Center for sure. And I was, yeah. hey, the most embarrassing moment. And I never got an opportunity to do it with me again. Well, uh, getting hung is horrible. It's, it's up there. We got some uh, breaking news. Toronto Scotty Barnes and the Hawks Trey Young have been named NBA Commissioner Adam Silver's injury replacements for the Eastern Conference team for the 2024 NBA All-Star Game. Trey Young. Hey. The NBA has righted the wrongs. Trey Young will be playing in the All-Star Game. Shout out to Ice Trey. Shout out to Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes. How do you feel about your Adidas brethren, well, Trey Young? Been in other than Scotty Barnes. No, I mean, yeah. Are you looking up? When he pulled the phone up, he's looking up something. What's Miles Turner's numbers? Miles Turner this season. 20, um, 28 and 6. Who? Scotty Barnes. Oh. Miles Turner's averaging 17, 7, averaging two blocks, 48 points. games. Scotty Barnes is? 20. Damn. 28 and 6. Good for sure. Replacing MB and Julius Randle, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. Maybe a, a backlash if a reserve player was like, no, nah, I'm good. Y'all didn't vote me. No, no, no one me. doing that. You can't do that. <clears throat> I already got vacation plan. I like Scott, okay. but I, I I would like to see Miles get that. Okay, so okay, just just you know, I I, I love Scotty because you know he's he's an all star. Okay, but how do you how do you justify not having Trey Young originally, and you use his record, but then you sub him in for Scotty Barnes, who team has seventeen wins. Let's hit up Adam Silver. Toronto, they throwing that Toronto. Got those from Toronto. Uh, I guess they're trying to spread the wealth. I guess. No, I'm just trying to figure out how does how, how does it. When you're a reserve, the whole team aspect of it goes out the window. Now, That's what I'm saying. How does it? Now you're an individual. What about Przingis? What what's Przingis number? Seventeen, like seventeen and eight. What about Derek White? Shit, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Gil. Did y'all see that? The Celtics are thirty-eight and twelve. Said? Y'all saw it? Did you yeah, the graphic? Celtics are 38 and 12. <laughs> He's the fourth player. 19 and 7 with two blocks. Huh? 19 and 7? 19 and 7 with two blocks. So it's 19 and 7 and two blocks on the number one team. Should have pushed him yeah. as the all star over Scotty Barnes. And, and replace a big, it's two bigs that's being. That's like, I, I, I was just, I'm just wondering how do you justify keeping Trey Young originally off by using his record as the excuse, but then a replacement. Worst record, record is. Yeah, worst record. I just, that's what I said. Like, I, I don't like when they do stuff like this because it's always contradicting to. But it's big up. Like, we, like I say, we can't be haters on who. No, 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 no. At least big up to Scotty. We all we can hate. You know, we all we can hate. No, I'm just saying, it's just, it's cool. I, just like to, I, I just like to make just it make sense. Yeah. So, it stay, so it stays consistent so everyone knows what's going on, right? Now, if you to put Porzingis in there, yes. And then, Anyone who's capable of to be an all-star, the know. fact that the fact that someone's someone on the couch is saying a fourth option Gil, over the, the third option. It is. was in jest, Chief. It was in jest. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. But then it, it would be trying to say like the old Pistons rule, which is because of this team is good. Let's throw Porzingis in there with Jalen and da da da. That'd have been three all-stars, right, on the Celtics. Mm -hmm. Porzingis won it. Yep. Yeah, but they didn't have Porzingis in front. They had White. They're white in front of Porzingis. And I think like, they had Porzingis and white on that graphic, but they just had white's uh, team record. <laughs> team that's, record. That's, that's team so record. <laughs> it's when, but that's, they're on a good team. But they do that. I mean, and, and it's, it's sad that, you know, like real all-star players that you come to see gets pushed out over someone who's winning, who's in fourth option. Like, 
you're not part of our scouting report. We do not care about you. No one's coming to see you but your family and friends. And you're, you are an all-star in an award that is the best players in the league. And now you get to use your team, your team success. Yeah. Right? When, you, when you're talking about options, a fourth option is just a part of the team. That is not really a factor of the team. And he gets to make an all-star game where the all-star game is usually the first options and then some second options. LaMelo Ball, what, what was his numbers? Uh, he, he was, he's been hurt. He's been hurt most yeah, of the time. He's been hurt. So he, you know. I was just thinking about all the East stars yeah. and all of the who got left off, who can potentially have made it. Like, I'm not going to put Drew in there. Yeah, so that's... You know, certain guys you can't put in Bane and certain guys have just been hurt down yeah. the line. And you got Jimmy. Jimmy made it, yeah. right? Jimmy's an all-star? No, I don't think Jimmy... I don't Jimmy's think not. Like, see, Jimmy didn't make it? Bam, make it. So but like, Jimmy didn't even make Tyler Hero, but, but, if you're going to argue. So I was thinking too, I was about to but say even, but, Okay, but, but something like that, right? It's like, well, if I have to put someone there, this is what they usually do. They just put Jimmy in there because everyone knows the name. And it's a right? consecutive thing. And it's consecutive, like, mm-hmm. oh, Jimmy. But with Scotty, it's like, well, he's the up-and-coming mm-hmm. You know, all stars, so it's easier because moving forward, this is going to be his team, and right. he's going to be the all star guy. So let's just go ahead and. But do we it see now. the struggle that Trey has endured, right, over the years, not being able to be an all star, mm-hmm. and then like to try to give Scotty the nod just because, like, if Trey have to go through it, let's let all the rest of these players have D-book to go goes, through it. D book went through it. Everybody got to yeah. go through. It. Don't just but give niggas the nod just because it's like, well, he's a young player, he's the future. It's like, but so is this guy. Not only is this guy more the future, his numbers speak louder than guys who are in the starting role. So why would you? Come on, man. But this is just by bi- just being biased. I feel bad bit. for Trey though. I, I really do. It's a lot of hate in the air. Uh, yeah, yeah, you you feel bad because it's it's. He's hated because he's good and how he plays the game. It's not he's hated because he's bad. He's hated like, like think about it. He, become the, he became the most hated dude because how he went in the garden and whooped the garden's ass. Mm-hmm. That's where he became hate. Like, because he's in so there weird. frying y'all asses. Weird. Y'all hated the man to the point where you're using his, what he did to y'all as like, Nah, we don't like him. I'm not voting for him. Like, oh, come on. Dog. But it's the family side for me. It's like his family, his friends, the people who like really are backing him. Like these are the people who got to be like, yo, what's really going on? Because I know like for my family, looking back at longevity and history, how things panned out, everybody has an expectation for you. Especially him coming out of Oklahoma, yeah. being compared to Steph Curry. It's like, where is that lineage going to start? Where is that true comparison going to start if the, the All-Stars are never going to be there? If, you know, going to the playoffs is, you know, or a seed and going to the finals is never going to be there. Certain things that Steph has, you can't even compare to Trey. But Trey has the ability mm-hmm. to be compared to him. Mm-hmm. So we're taking away the true comparison when we always go down to the metrics and the stats is like, all right, Trey, Steph. Well, Steph was seven-time All-Star and just the All-NBA. And it's like, well, y'all hated on him just cuz. So, Gil, why did frying the Knicks work for Reggie Miller, uh, but it seems to be hurting Trey Young? Mm. I don't know. I, uh, that's weird. I don't, I don't know how I don't know how that <laughs> it's works. So odd. It's, it's, it's so weird. Right, you, because it's like it's like I'm like y'all don't love the Knicks that much. Like <laughs> y'all like great basketball. Not the team either. So it's like, what are we doing? Like that's what the Nick fans love great basketball. And I came in here, gave you great basketball. Yeah. And you wanna spit on me? <laughs> y'all team spit is not on, good, so you're mad at me. This is when you know Nick York New York fans was affected. They're in the next year playoffs playing uh, Cavs talking about Trey Young overrated. Like, wait a minute. He's not even in the playoffs. I mean, any time in New York a fuck check, Trey Young chant will break out for no particular yeah, reason. That's like that, but that's let you know right there. Hey, just, just, just him yeah. doing this pisses he people off. Try them. So, I mean, a lot of hate in the air. We got to talk about uh, some hate that the women's side is getting. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., Pulled up to the pivot recently, uh, had this to say about the women's game. Uh Uh-oh. And they're very talented, but so is is a famous ping pong player. They're just as talented as as a 
like the best ping pong player is just as talented as the best basketball player. That doesn't mean they're going to get paid the same because it's because right. they play what, ping pong. It's what the people want to watch. You know what I mean? So, as much as I understand females wanting the same treatment as as men basketball players, is is it's a different sport. People they're not packing out the arenas. Obviously, their TV deals aren't the same. So, as much as I advocate for women and kind of the equality of the respect of their craft and all those things. I mean, you can't pay them the same thing, you know, but I do feel like they should, there, there should be a little way to make a little bit more money for right. them because they are very talented. Correct. Yeah, I think, the, I think the big thing, um, mm-hmm. obviously, when you're thinking about negotiations, labor unions, and different things like that, I don't believe there's any woman that believes she should be paid as a man gets paid. It's more about the revenue share. It's more about the percentage and I think those things play into mm. it. And then the other side of it is treatment, mm. you know, within their own organizations. Like, they're never, like, they, they don't... Well, it's not make, as exciting. They, no, it's, it's not as exciting. It's not as exciting basketball. Yeah, you're not... They got to load the rims. I would watch a girl coming down the lane. <sighs> I don't know. Like, I would watch that. They need to load the rims. They're actually... Um... <laughs> So, Lexi, you have some thoughts on MPJ's comments. The uh, floor is yours. Well, let me start by saying I think his heart was in the right place. So I'm not here to shit on Michael Porter Jr. I do think he started he started on the is right this? foot, and then he just kind of put his foot in his mouth. And, like, my issue with the pivot is they allow these guys to say things that they know is wrong, and they just, they just are like, okay, keep keep going, keep going, or they'll feed them more information for them to then double down on the stupid shit that they had just said. So, I mean, there's, like, a lot to unpack in his, like, statements, identifying us as females instead of women the whole time, um, that we can't get treated the same, and then he he then says treatment to payment, which are two completely different things. We can still be treated with respect and they can respect our craft without us making 20 to $30 million a year. Like those things are not like those, though, both of those things can happen. We cannot get paid $30 million and we can be respected and treated well for being professional basketball players. Lowering the rims comment, you already know how I feel about that. It's stupid. It doesn't benefit me personally at all because I'm you can't still not gonna dunk. Yeah. I can't dunk on a 10-foot rim. I'm definitely not going to dunk on a 9-foot rim. It's going to fuck up my shooting. It's going to fuck up everybody's shooting. And I just feel like the way he plays basketball, like, he shoots a lot of threes. I just don't. You don't. He doesn't dunk. He wants us to dunk. You dunk. Like, what are we talking about? It's just, it's a tired conversation. And I'm, I'm very annoyed with men continuing to create these spaces to discuss these things when they don't watch our games. They don't know us. They don't ask us our opinions about anything ever. And like, if you don't have to watch us play, that's fine. But like, for you to just sit there and just constantly shit on our craft, our product and everything without really being tuned in, like, it's just not, it's not right at this point. But again, you don't have to watch anything, but y'all always want to talk about us. So might as well watch us, shit. Like, damn. Okay. I have a question. Okay. What is the problem? What is the solution? Right. Now, if we can't, one, answer the questions, and we can't come to any resolve about any of the conversations that's being had, right? So a lot of times when we do ask the question, so what's the problem? Yeah. I mean, everyone says the problem is the product. That's not the problem. There's great basketball being played throughout the entire W then we're, always, we're either getting compared to NBA, which everyone complains about how NBA is being played right now. So we either get compared to that, or we get compared to the three most marketed women's college basketball games of the entire women's college basketball season. So we're stuck in the middle, just getting, getting it from both sides. If we were out there playing bad basketball, like I would understand, but like that's, that's not the case. So marketing, promotion, our equity in our uh, media deals, all that. It's like a very, it's a very layered issue. Let me ask you this. You said you're playing good basketball. You feel that. Yeah. 
So if we ask NBA players right now, are you guys playing good basketball right now? Do you think they would say yes? Consensus, it's like a consensus of, you, got, I mean, you, th I you guys they think- They say it publicly, so I can't, I can't hear their true opinions. But they would say, yeah, like we're playing good basketball. Yes. So the real consensus and the real judgment doesn't come from in the internal. Right. The players are always gonna stay within the players' consensus. We playing pretty good basketball. We don't feel like we're playing basketball. Bad, but then you go to the fans and us, who we could say, hey, the basketball is shit right now when we watch the NBA. But it's not coming from our fans. It's I, coming from... The people who have the voice. Whoever. People who don't right. really, really watch the game. That's, right, that's, <laughs> yeah. But when you look at the fans don't have a voice as much as we do as interpreting what the fans are telling us and feeding us, and we just push it out, right? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, the solution. What is the solution to... You believing that y'all are playing good basketball, but the fans are showing otherwise because they're not coming out to support, which would change the sales, which would change the, uh, the, the concessions and all of the things that make the, 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 the W boom. Right. And even for the NBA, the NBA would boom more if everyone felt the basketball was really being played at a high level. Now, if we got a bunch of guys scoring at a high level as they are, 70s, 60s, 50s, how many ladies in the W are doing that, putting on a show? Right. Like uh, Asia, she was what, 50, what 55? Mm -hmm. Something like that, 57? That was the only outburst. And then you got Sabrina with the three-pointers. Those are the two things that we're looking at, like, all right, that will be entertaining. Enrique uh, in, in Dallas, she shows some glass, some, some, some stuff. Um, Point guard uh, for the Aces is to uh, Chelsea. Chelsea. She shows her thing every now and again. But at the end of the day, where's the flash and dash? And we look at Juju. Mm -hmm. We look at Caitlin. Right. You look at Angel. Right. These are p girls who are in college that give an inter inter entertainment quality, but they're not in a W. So when you talk about the solution, it's like, all right, you hear a bunch of people giving their opinion on the problem. We got to figure out how you guys can deliver the solution so it can be delivered to you guys. Right. Because if there is no the solution, it's like you got to deal with everybody keep identifying the problem. But it's just, and I, and I completely understand where you're coming from, but it's like we're getting shit on because our team, our league is so small and so talented. Like those, outbur like, those outbursts are hard because you have a lot of good players, yep. players yep. on your team. Yep. So it's like, yeah, you'll, you'll get a, maybe a 50 ball here, a 40 ball there, but it's hard. And we actually be Ding up. Like, right. I tell y'all that all the time. Like, maybe we'll play less defense to, like, up the entertainment value, which I completely understand. But, like, the people watching got to understand when that happens, like, we're getting yelled at by our coaches and all these things. So it's like... It's a cycle, and I think we're getting there. You know, we don't take as many threes as the NBA does yet. I think we're heading in that direction. I think this draft class and next year's draft class, I think they're going to make a big effort to keep these players in the league, to keep the eyes on the league. But, like, that has nothing to do with us. All right. <clears throat> because I did my research on all of it, um, the problem is that the WNBA girls that are in there now are too selfish to sacrifice today for the future. Mm -hmm. From day one, they handicapped American girls, right? So the American girls, if you're born in America, you have to go to college and play to a certain age, right? right? Overseas girls who have no following, right? You don't have an American following, but because you turn pro at an early age, because there's no high school basketball, you can come into the NBA or the WNBA at 18, 19 years old. Well, the product that has the following here has to wait. So you're, you're sitting in college. Now think about how college basketball is. For the most part, it becomes dinosaurish, right? So for three years, whatever wild horse came into college basketball with their style out of high school has been whipped into a team a type system, of player, yeah. a system player. When that system player gets into the W, she follows the rules. Mm -hmm. right. The problem with the W is, if you don't allow the youth to come in and change the game, change it, right? You think about the, you, what I'm saying is, you think about the Jujus and the Kellys and all those guys, if they come into the league right now, 
Tarasi them can't physically keep up with these girls, which means get the fuck out of the league already. Mm -hmm. Retire, retire, retire. These girls is too fast, they're moving too fast at a speed you can't keep up with. But if I get to play against another 40 year old, because we get to sit in here at 40 years old, it is easy to play basketball then. Okay. But if I gotta stick yeah. someone that's, think about Jeff Teague when he retired, right? At 30 something. It's because somebody was moving, like I can't keep up with these dudes, I'm out. Make room for somebody else. So what ends up happening is, the product, the, the, the thing that pushes the W into another category of money is sitting in college. Yep. It's, and it's been sitting in college. It's, it's always sitting. All your stars. In our draft class 2018, I think our entire first round picks are still actively mm. playing. But it has taken so many years for us to get our own names mm -hmm. and faces that whatever hype we had in college it's lost. It's like yeah, it's lost. It's non-existent yep. unless you're at an active social media, do other stuff. But then you've got to go to Europe and play. Now you're dark for eight months. Now you come back. You're like, oh, I'm back. And everyone's like, wait, who are you again? Yeah. You're to our me. draft pick? Like, 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 look at this class right here, right? The, the, the names you're saying. All of those, all those girls can stay in college one more year. Yeah. Right? They can stay in... In college, one more year, they have the most popular names amongst, if we say just women's basketball itself, some of those college girls would be yep. part of these, these names. Some of them might be in front of W, like yeah. one or two, like most famous basketball player right now. One of those college girls is going to be one or two, right? right? Yeah. And it's not a product inside the W, mm -hmm. which those are the girls that's going to move the needles. Those are the girls that's going to get all the lipstick thing. Think about the youth that follows them, right? Those are the ones who buys the jerseys, buys the products. Buy. They're the ones who put money into the game. The NBA, when Jordan retired the first time and they started using the youth, Kobe, KG, T-Mac, they started pushing the younger yeah. talent do you think if As he didn't thing. retire, that would have happened then? Probably not. Like, who's your, that's what I'm saying, who's the Trojan horse that takes the W, right? If you're saying it's Juju, then you need to make a rule where she can come okay. in now. She can come in now. Because the thing if about not, the rule is, you're talking it's about a rule. You don't, have to, you don't have to leave. So I've always been very much against that, letting them come out whenever rule, because then I think some girls will come out that shouldn't, and then, then what? But, but you don't but have to. What do I'm saying that. is, it shouldn't. Like, I'm not. Con that, that's what I'm saying. Like, the NBA. Kobe is not compared to Eddie Jones, right? That's who he's in front of. He, Eddie Jones is an all star. This kid is 18. We're not on the same playing field. I know his trajectory, so he has a spot no matter what. Right. He's right. protected no matter what. My number one pick coming out of high school, 18, right? She is protected no, no matter what because, one, her. Understanding the hits, understanding being the pro, by the time she would have got in here versus, yep, I like she's, you know, even though she don't play this year, she battles with you guys in practice every day. Brad, by the time she, yeah, by the time it would be her regular rookie, rookie year, she'd be three years in. She might be a dominant pro by then, right? Those are what's missing in the game. Yeah. And then same thing, get rid of some of those dinosaur ass coaches, right? <laughs> what is your offense? Do y'all run? Do y'all run UCLA cut? No. How many teams actually run UCLA cut in the W? I don't think many anymore. Because I know, I, I know I was, uh, what was the coach from Detroit? Bill and, and Bill and Bear. I was watching a game where <laughs> I'm watching him. I'm like, wait, are they running UCLA? Is that the UCLA oh, flex yeah, when Becky, cut? When Becky came in. Yeah, like that. She shut all that shit down. Yeah, that's, that, but that's what I'm saying. You need to put speeds in. So if you guys shoot three, y'all, y'all should be shooting 43s a game. Oh, I wait. agree. But I think, I hope in the new CBA, which is about to be renegotiated, rookie contracts become one of your guaranteed ones. I think that would help with this youth movement. 30, 35, and, 35 and over. Thir 32 and over. I don't have no value for you. Let's address the, the elephant in the room really is the ultimate sacrifice that the WNBA has to make is integrity of the game and entertainment value. This is the, the ultimate sacrifice the NBA made. When he's talking about when Michael Jordan mm -hmm. retired, the game changed the format that allowed players who had the abilities to be more entertaining, to bring in more seat, seat fillers. So when you look at the, the WNBA, it's compared to, in my eyes, the Euro League. Euro League compared to the NBA is a totally different game because they play with integrity, it's boring, 
it's real basketball. And real basketball is boring mm -hmm. because you're running sets, you're, you're talking on defense, you're doing everything the whole shot clock. you learn from college. Is it, but is right? that real basketball? From, from where we come from, from the, from the foundation of it, right? Yeah. So then you look for, at the W, it's foundational basketball yeah. from college. So it looks like still college basketball, but it's just older women playing college yeah. basketball. It's not entertaining. So the sacrifice that needs to be made is when Juju and Caitlin and all of these other younger players come in, allow them to be more entertaining. Take the fossils out of the game, which are running the fossil offenses. In right now, that are entertaining like that, they just. Well, look, but, but we see them. But, but they're do, harnessed by but, coaches. Yeah, and yeah. So but that's you got the, the sacrifice of the yeah. game. And so much rides on your if you win things instead of just how you how you play and how you carry yourself. And I think once we can separate that as well, like I think more players will be more comfortable just hooping, like. Yeah. Yes, you want to win, obviously. If you're a good enough player, wins will come. But if you're out there hooping and you don't win a championship or you don't make it to the finals, like you can't be like, but that's what happens. That's what happens. In the NBA in right game. now, how many box outs do you actually see? None. All right. The integrity of the game when it comes to box outs? Cool. Rotations. How many rotations do you truly None. see happening, right? When you talk about the sacrifice that was made is we don't hold them accountable for the small things that made basketball basketball anymore. Right. They let that go. But Be because we're women, it's like we have to do everything the right yeah, way. Everything, yeah. So but that But the right way is get it done. Get if it I done. got a girl that yeah. can come down, if Caitlin, right? If she jack. if she comes in and jack shots, that's her game, and she comes to the W and I say we don't play like that. Yes. I'm as I a coach, as, if I'm a coach, I did a dish justice yes. to the league yes. itself by doing 100%. that. 100%. She is famous. She is the number one two pick because of this style. Yes. If I do not adapt to this style, I, I ruin the agree. game for you. Lowering the rim for Duncan, you're not selling your game to NBA and dudes. There's a, there's, it's called women's basketball. There's women out there everywhere that supports the game. So you lowering the rim to seven foot and six foot, who gives a fuck what we think? My daughter is not watching the game for Duncan. Right. She's not watching the game for this. She's watching the game for what it is because that's how she plays it. So that's your fan base. You have to... Oh, yeah, right, remember, no women. I'm like high school... Girls. Think, think about high school girls and college girls. Your fan base... They play a whole different, think about what I'm saying. They live a whole different style and play a whole different style than you. They dress, dip, they roll their they little shorts up, thigh. Y'all got a long shorts. Y'all are old women to them. Right? I don't wear long shorts. Yeah, no, I'm just saying for the most part. Y'all, so y'all. I'm real cute <laughs> on that word, please. No, think, so think about it. When you guys come into the draft, y'all got on suits, business women stuff. What, the, what do you think a 16-year-old girl is looking at? What the tell, hell is that? We need to, we need to pull up uh, my job class picture. No, I'm just saying for just consent. I don't think we have, I think no, we I'm just have saying, one or two. No, I'm just saying, but, they, but you, you, you are women. Yeah. But your audience is girls. Yeah. Right? So it's two different. So there's a, there's a bridge that's gone because you're 22. These girls are 16, 17, 18. So the look that they have versus what they see is very different and to them. That's, that's great that you said that because I was just with a bunch of women in like the fashion and entertainment industry. And I had, I had been meeting them for the first time and one of the, they all said it. I had no idea that uh, WNBA players looked like you. Mm -hmm. I've never seen one. And I was like, damn. that's what I've been trying to tell people though. <laughs> Cause people think I get in my feelings because I'm not the, I don't get promoted. I don't do this. I'm not one of the WNBA faces, whatever. No, I don't care. I'm doing my own thing. I love playing basketball, it's cool. But I didn't grow up seeing girls look like me mm -hmm. out there, their hair done, their nails done, their lashes, makeup on. I love all of that, as long as you take care of business on the court. Mm -hmm. But I've had a group of women, like my age, a little older maybe, tell me that they have. this is the first time they've seen a WNBA player that looks like me. And I'm just kind of like... Well, let's talk a little bit about the future of the W uh, with the special hibachi time. <laughs> And we got the lights. It's about to sizzle. Mm. So, uh, you know, Caitlin Clark going to smash Kelsey Plum's career scoring record. But uh, a USC freshman may be coming for it in the near future. So let's talk about Juju Watkins. You brought her up earlier, Gil. 
Sierra Canyon Products set a USC record this weekend, dropping 51 points. Upset win against Stanford, 14 for 26 from the field, 6 of 11 from 3. 17 for 19 from the free throw line. She also had 11 rebounds, 4 steals. So Juju's averaging 27.3 points per game this season. Doing things like this. Cooking time. She make her body proud, good. No, no, facts. So, so, yeah, you've watched Juju since high school. Mm-hmm. She played with uh, your daughter, right? Mm-hmm. Sierra Canyon. Very familiar with her game. What's, what's Juju Watkins feeling? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna just go from um, WNBA coach, Hall of Famer, uh, Don. Don last year said she is the greatest basketball, women's basketball player ever, and she's a high school kid. She got labeled that by Don last year. This is the great, the way she moves, the way she plays. If you, if you had her work out with Booker and Kevin Durant, which she does, that's who she works out with, she will have the same mannerisms, the same moves, the same everything. She doesn't have no girl m- motor in her, right? I mean, she's a girl, you, you can see, right? You know, so, Woman, a young woman. Um, young woman, yeah. She imitates them. Yeah, she yeah. imitates them. Like, you can see how she plays. That's not, <laughs> that's not women's basketball. That's just a hooper. So um, she is the game changer. And the fact that she has to go to college for four years is is going to be a downfall on the W. You have the player, you have, in Don's, you have the Michael Jordan of women's basketball at your doorstep. Are you going to let it in to change the game or are you going to let it sit in college for four years? Right? It's your call. But you see where it's at and you see what it's doing. It's, it's different. It moves different. It walks different. It looks different. She can sell products, she can move products, she can put an arena. This is your this is your golden nugget. What are you gonna do with it? Lexi, what do you think about Juju? I mean, I think she's amazing. Um, I've seen her play live twice. Um, she got a pro ready game. Um, her IQ is really high for someone that's only 18 years old. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, USC has pretty much given her the keys, so. It's nice to see a young player like that get that freedom off rip because that's not how it was for me. That's not how it has been in the past. You have your best player that's a freshman. You just let her be her and do Mm -hmm. her. So it's been great to see. But, yeah, I agree with Gil. Like, I have been very hard on, like, not allowing younger players come into the league just because it just – because of the earnings – you have to go overseas sometimes, but now we have other opportunities here in the States, more opportunities for branding and all these kind of things. So I don't think overseas will be an issue for a player like Juju. But again, the rule, like, it's not a designation that like everyone should leave early, but I think they should make that. You think, option. you know, obviously, and we talked about this a lot, making that transition to W, you got first rounders who get cut, who can't right. even make Right, so if they're gonna lower that, like I said earlier, you need to guarantee these rookies yeah. their contracts for at least two seasons so they can come in, but, learn. But you say with Juju's game, you think where she's at right now, I'm not saying she would come to the W right now and be a star, but... Nigga, she's smashing him. Listen, man, listen. Uh, can I? May I? She's, she's a hoop for she's sure. A six, she's, a six, she's, yeah. she's a six. one guard that is stronger than probably every guard in the W. At her side, it's like she's big. She's more athletic than all of them, right? I mean, you're gonna have like one a freak of nature that moves like her, and if they do, they're probably not coordinated like her. So they're they're literally gonna be playing against a Devin Booker female style. May I? I love this conversation because we have the opportunity, right? Where we could forget all of the metrics and the rules and just say go pluck them out as they are, not oh everybody can come out. No, 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 no. You and you, mm-hmm. come on in here. I got to bring Caitlin Clark into this just because she would be considered for me the Larry Bird and Juju would be the LeBron James. MJ. So if we, so if we go back. Not even close. But. <laughs> let me cook for a second. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. So you look at the white and black contrast of it all. Iowa, Juju, UFC. She got the talent, natural ability. Boom, 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 all of that. The, the booby miles. Caitlin is doing something that I've never seen before. She could have left last year 
when I'm talking about like, just take her and let her go. Everybody else, the rules still apply to y'all, but y'all not her. You see what she's doing? Crazy, incredible. She, not, she ain't gotta put up 51, cause what she's doing and how she plays, it's like, okay, what is that? Okay, you can't, can't stop her from getting to the cup, and if you try to, stop, pop, boom, from wherever the fuck she wanna shoot it from. Cash money. Juju, you can't stay in front of her. She's got silky shit with her. It's moving on a string. So when you look at the dynamic between the two, marketing, it goes back to Magic and Bird. How when they came in, you had two contrasts with two different markets, and you say, we gotta, have, we gotta make this work for us in order to build the value of the league. We put them against each other. But if you can't, you gotta keep them in college, it's not helping. That's why I say that and sacrifice. they're never gonna play each other. The never. sacrifice. They the don't sacrifice. play each other? They're never. Yeah. Well, if Kalen leaves, they only play each other in the tournament, and... I, I, I can tell you this, if they matched up, it'd be embarrassing for Caitlyn. I don't think so. Because mm. it's like Caitlin Steph. Caitlyn wouldn't even guard Juju. Because like yeah. once she can't guard Juju, like Steph and, against Ju LeBron. and Juju's going to guard her. Steph and against she's LeBron. not going to get past the girl that I, I got a million when screens coming at. I got a million screens coming at Juju. As a, hey, all of my teammates, screen her. Get her off me. The, get her off me. Get her off me. Get her off me. Because I trap it. I don't see nothing. <laughs> like this, she, she, get her off have me. You seen Juju, have you seen Juju up close? Yeah. yeah. That's get her off me. Like she going to pick her up full court? Yeah. All, get, this, all got, this fake and one handed dribble. Stop. I got two big girls. Get her off me. Get her off me. Get her off me. I don't give a. And I'm about to shoot this bitch as soon as she give me a little bit of breathing room. And Juju's going and Juju gonna be like this. Come here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, look, so you look at the dynamic, it's a sacrifice for the league to say, look, we got to ease up on these rules for certain generational players because yeah, we're keeping them down there too long. We're suffering. They're not necessarily suffering because they're building up their fan base. They're still getting better. But for the league to, to say that things are not happening for them when they have things or solutions right in front of you, you're holding those solutions back. Now it's like, what y'all complaining about? Y'all made the rules. So, like, even even like the the, the 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 W draft picks, right? One through four, pick one and four makes the same amount. The fuck? There's what? a lot. There are a lot of what? internal change that but, needs to be done. But that's what I'm saying. So what happens is there has to like it. This favors the owner, like. This, the, the, what women are afraid of benefits the owners. A hard cap, right, benefits the owners. You're a billionaire, right? You got three billion. I got 200 million. It's in my best interest that I can hard cap so you can't just overspend and put the price up so I can afford my team, so I can compete with you. Right? So what I'm doing is handicapping the billionaire for spending his money. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's when the billionaire should say, hold, hold on. Like, we're not on the same playing field. We don't have the same marketing. We don't have the same city. So, no, you afford what you're going to afford. So now I Let can over. Do what we want now do. I can do what I want to do, right? My draft picks, I want to pay the draft pick, the number one pick, this, this, this. Unfortunately, you shouldn't get that pick if, if you can't afford it. What happens is now. My broke ass got to go out, even though 200 million is not broke. But my broke ass now got to go find real funding to help me compete with you, exactly. which puts more money which is into what the. What's happening in the league right now, <laughs> yes. which is why we have probably three teams who are just light years ahead of us, just based on that alone. You have on a hard, with a hard with cap. With a hard cap. But with a hard at, cap. Look at the talent that's being stacked on those teams. With a hard cap. So you got three teams with mostly all the talent on these three teams. So where is the money going to be allocated if the WNBA needs more money to spend on certain X, Y players? So if Juju and Caitlin are the, the metric of these, type of these are the type of players who are going to bring money in for us, right. they're in college. Correct. The other type of players are going to bring in money on us, they're all on the same team. <laughs> three different teams, which those three teams have all the money. Mm -hmm. They're paying them pretty mm -hmm. good. Everyone else is complaining about we ain't getting paid enough. Now... How good are you? Right. Are you showing your talent to be able to say, I want more money because I'm putting up numbers, I'm putting people in the seats, I'm selling these jerseys? It's a business at the end of the day. We can't become emotional if we're not doing the good business because when you do good business, you go in and negotiate. Numbers don't lie. That man, stat man, mm -hmm. you got yeah. the stats. No, I but, but, just When like, you got the stats, just, numbers I don't lie. I agree with what y'all are saying, and I've been saying this since I got into the league because of 
what I've been through and dealt with, and I just have seen things be mis mismanaged. And I just, I mean, I've always had like a lot of ideas. I just never have been able to express them because I've always had been like one foot out. Right. So, Lexi, it's, it's, you talked about. No, it's the okay. So, where, where money, where money inflates is potential, right? Right now, the WNBA don't have potential. Yeah. They have players. Correct. Right. The potential is the younger generation, right? So let's say I draft a player at 18 and 21 is coming up and they have only averaged 10, That's it. right? They've only averaged 10 points. And I'm like, well, he's turning a corner, right? So now I'm paying for what I think it's going to be. Yeah. So now I'm saying, all right, uh, five-year 50. Yep. Even though, he doesn't, on potential. even though he doesn't. So I'm going to give him five-year 50, right? That right there established a pay grade. Yep. So now got players who have real stats get to say, well, he got five-year 50. I'm worth at least 80, five-year 80. Yo, so, I'm with you on this. So Trust that's, me. But that's what it is. You need, you need to, you need, y'all need, like, the fight should be let the younger girls come in. If they, if, listen, there's going to be heads cut off. I'm sorry. There's going to be choppies. Business. There's yes. going to be chops. But right? come in and hoop and compete. Yes. It's something I've had to do for mm -hmm. six years, come in every year and come in, compete, and mm -hmm. earn a spot because I've never been guaranteed one. Mm -hmm. So I'm with you because I've, I've done it. I've had to do it every year in my career. I was a first-round draft pick, and I had to come in every year and earn my spot. That's, that's still bad. So, Lex, you talk about being a first-round pick. We have your draft day swag. Just Ooh, let's see. Hey. Let's see. Let's see. But Lexi, we, we also have yeah, some... Yeah, yeah, they don't see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the... Yeah. Lexi, oh, she's so cute. Lexi, we also have some, some breaking news. Uh, yeah. That we, we alluded to earlier in the show, but... Uh-oh. Courtesy of Lexi Brown, go ahead. Okay, well, y'all heard me talking about how I've never had a contract. I just signed one yesterday. Guaranteed. Ah! Hey! <laughs> Two more years. In LA, well, three counting this one. So legs, I ain't gonna legs, uh, legs. Hey, I'm here to say, hey, Applebee's on you. <laughs> Applebee's on Lexi. Got that, bag, huh? got that bag, huh? Oh, she got that bag, huh? Applebee's on oh. Lexi. This is and three years, seventy-five dollars. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. They just said they got Lexi for a whole oh, shit. <laughs> Boy, they be Yo, doing shut up. They be doing oh, it all my wrong. God. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I, nah. Yo, that's that's Lexi. Well, I'm just saying, like, my nigga, like, you can't no, do no, that. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, I'm like, the first, it's, trust me. I'm like the first. Say, trust round me. Get, hey, say, right, say, right, trust I'm me. Here. Hey, I'm, I'm here. here. I'm good. Like, what I'm, I'm doing this. I'm moving to Woodland Hills now. So I'm doing this show. They said even the second round only makes what ten grand less than the first. Like, I'm like, whoa, that is crazy. But again, at that point, it really don't matter where you get picked. It's about the team at this point. Yeah. Congratulations, Lexi, on coming to be with BS Sparks game. Yeah, pull up. In Underdog Fantasy's official LA Spark Suite, presented by Underdog Fantasy and Gil. I will be there. I will be there. Get us the tunnel suites, Gil. You have the power. Get us some motion. We can park right in the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Pull up. Dab Front rolls, right baby. Pull up, pull up. All right, well, let's keep this thing moving. Uh, you know, like I said, Cavs fans have been bitching at us for quite a while now, tagging us in numerous tweets, posts. Wait, the cat, is LeBron over there? No. No, no, I'm just saying. Well, I'm just saying they're like we we <laughs> we only really like knew the Cavs existed because LeBron got drafted. That you stop it. I'm just b being honest. Nobody was a Cav fan. Mark, Mark Price. Price, thank you. Come on, Brad Doherty, come on. Elo, ooh, y'all was real fans then, huh? Basketball many, fans. <laughs> yeah. Basketball fans. How many Mark Price jerseys did you have well, for the Cavs hey, on it? Hey, it's funny I you definitely mentioned had a throwback you mentioned Mark it. Price. I Not was a Cavs. throwback nigga. Not yes. Cavs. Yes, y'all. And Georgia Tech. Uh-oh. Uh Maybe that one. And uh -oh. Georgia Tech. I was, hey, I'm a connoisseur, the motherfucker. I'm trying to tell you. Yo, Cavs, Cavs the uniform. Cavs, I think oh, Terrell yes, Brandon, the, old, the old school yeah. one. And Brad yeah, Doherty, from, yeah. he from Loki, he from my No, they didn't have not one TV game until <laughs> LeBron got there. So, Larry Nance. They're playing Larry well Nance. right now. So, They're playing very well right now. Cavs have emerged as one of the best stories in the league. They're 14-1 in their last 15 games, which I believe is the, the longest streak 
without LeBron in Cavs franchise history. <laughs> like I say, you got to report news and include LeBron. In without LeBron, is the longest streak ever. He did, he okay, did we got it. Cavs. I think it matches the streak when he was there. I'm just telling, pointing out information. Stat man, as they call it. <laughs> uh, they've won six straight games, passed the Bucks for second in the East. Donovan Mitchell been a big part of the Cavs' success. Doing legendary stuff like this. Gil, I don't know if you caught this. Such a big part of that. Oh, ah. part Okay, uh-huh. It's Mitchell now. It's great to see Black History Month. Uh, get him. Oh, my God. To himself, do you believe that? Donovan Mitchell oh. with Over there. Has given the Cavaliers an 18-point lead. <laughs> <laughs> they, they couldn't do nothing with that, Gil. Happy Black Sunday. History Month on behalf of Donovan Mitchell. So during the streak. Quite a few times this season. No, that was different. I mean, just the, the thought process. Hey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The thought process of that was. That, that's, just, that's just different. I ain't got nowhere to go. Yeah, I ain't got nowhere to go, and I don't want to pass. I don't want to pass. <laughs> none of y'all. I don't want to pass. All right. So here go the backboard. Here go the backboard. So the backboard it goes. It to me. <laughs> so during the streak, <laughs> Spiders averaging close to 29 points a game, seven assists, five rebounds, shooting close to 50% from the field, 36% from three. Gil, uh, please don't hate. Be mindful. We have Cavs fans watching. Are the Cavs for real or Fugazi? Second in the East right now, creeping on a come up. I mean, you know, for, for what year, last year? I mean, they've played well since Donovan's been there. They've played like a team. They have all the um, ingredients to be a good team, right? Um, they play together. They like each other. Um, they still need a couple more pieces to really compete like especially in the playoffs, um, your your two best players are, you know, six foot, right? Both of them are the the same actual player, right? So when you start getting isolation plays and they start picking on you, you can't hide neither one of them. You know, Garland and you know uh, Mitchell are both the same type of guys. Garland's more of the PG style, but you know when you know like somebody like Boston goes big. Right, and you got Jaden Brown and Tatum at the one, two. What do you do there, right? Because you guys have to guard them now. Um, you know, so depending on who they match up with, you know, they can get out of that first round. But for the most part, they don't have enough firepower to go further than the second. Yeah, I mean, I think they would just have to like over scheme defensively, which that can take away from their offense, which is what they're thriving on, considering that Mitchell and Garland are considered undersized. Um, when did they lose last year? Uh, first first round to the Knicks. 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 Mm -hmm. But they was they had a really decent season last season mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, fourth so, seed. I mean, they got that year of experience under their belt in the playoffs, which I think will be helpful. But yeah, I agree with Gil. Like, they need to they need to get a little bigger. Yeah. Or they'll just over scheme and defensively lock it up mm -hmm. being undersized. So you talk about getting that playoff experience. Jared Allen last year, uh, or on that first round exit to the Knicks last year, said even for me, the lights were brighter than expected. I think they're used to those. <laughs> they're used to those. Turn them down. Turn them those, down. Those Ohio, those Ohio lights. Too bright. Too no. bright. So, we were shot out of the Cavs real for Gazi. I think just like the Knicks, they turn in the corner. It takes a lot of wear and tear on the ego and the pride of a team that's expected to do certain shit and don't really deliver compared to a team that's not expected to do anything and start to, you know, show progression. And I think with both the Knicks and the Cavs, you look at where they were and where they came, and now you look at Donovan Mitchell doing what he's doing. 15 games, no Garland, mm -hmm. right? Uh, no Mobley. So you just got Allen and Mitchell cooking, smaller, playing small ball. They're doing what they need to do. Now you add those two other pieces, even if they're playing two guards, so he's 6'3", Garland's 6'2", 6'1 and a half. It really doesn't matter about the size and the scheme between Mobley and Allen, they're two great defensive players, right? And so it's about them facing a Philadelphia 76ers team where you have to do something with Embiid. You could get both of them in foul trouble. Yeah. That's where they, that's their only real hurdle. Everybody else, even with the Knicks last year, that was a toss up. It was a toss up series, and they just didn't show up because, like you said, Allen showed up. He's like, ugh, yeah, it was a little bit brighter than I thought. Yeah. Now, Turn you, get him a, off. you get another year of that ain't gonna be no excuse this time, Jared. Like, we're paying you, we're paying Evan, we're paying a Garland, and we're definitely paying Mitchell. We need y'all to show up this time. Take us over the hump. And I think Donovan has taken a leadership role now, knowing that Garland is out for 15 games and he's shown. I'm ready to show the world that I'm a star, right? And that I can be 
and I think that I am a superstar. I always looked at him as little D-Wade, especially in, in Utah and the way that he plays in, in Damn, Cleveland. I forgot he was in Utah. He, cha he changed the <laughs> dynamic of, <laughs> you know, he changed the dynamic of how he actually plays the game in somewhat of a bigger market because LeBron put a stamp on it as up in the market value. Um, but if he wants to go somewhere else, he doesn't have to prove that he can take the team somewhere else other than the first round race in. So who, if Knicks versus them, both, this year. both healthy? Both healthy. Ooh. Ooh. Up. Seven. It's See? going seven. It's going seven. So right now, <laughs> playoff started today. Cavs will be facing the Magic at the seventh seed. They win. And yeah. then they'd have the, the winner the of the Bucks Magic. Pacers. Okay. Bucks Pacers in the, the second round, which. So that's what I said. The, 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 the problem. Could be the, Pacers. The, the problem. No. No. Not in the playoffs. Not the Bucks. The, prob the problem with the. Mm. They've been no, smacking them this yeah. year. Yeah, they've been, they've been smacking them. I mean, Suns. The Suns are 4 1 against the Bucks this year. Yeah, yeah Suns like, smacked yes, everybody. They got their number. Ooh, yes. Regular season, though. Suns smacked everybody during regular season, too. When playoffs came, they got smacked up themselves. Like, yeah. the, the regular season has nothing to do. It don't matter. Because the regular season, this happens. They get this book, and this book tells you everything a coach can and can't do everything a player can and can't do. So when the <laughs> Knicks look at this book, they're going to say, all right, Donovan Mitchell loves going left. All his step backs going left. All his jumping ability is left. All his shots, his creativity goes left. If you push him to his right hand, he can't jump off his left leg. He can't step back off his left leg. Right? You, I have, it's called scouting report. I have all this scouting report. So when we're playing this game, when you look at the game and how it's being played, and they're sitting there pushing him to his strong hand, knowing his strong hand is his weak hand in this in this this realm there's a reason right when we seen um what was his name Ru ricky rubio right when we watched the ricky rubio versus james harden and ricky rubio was playing behind him and everybody's like what the fuck are you doing S someone schemed that and thought that was a great idea <laughs> i remember that he's rubio playing behind him because he's he's trying to push him to a certain way because of the trying the, the to scheme. take away the step back. yeah you're trying to take away the step back not realizing just push him left. <laughs> Just push him to his left hand and make him try to do the left hand floater. He's a right hand player who wants to get back to this side. That's how he shoots. Right. Left, right? If you want me to just drive, push me right. Right. Yep. Nope. If you, if you want me to use my bag, push me to my weak hand because that's where the hezzy, the crossovers come from, the step backs, the side steps, the pull-ups. That's going left, right? Me going right, shit. All I'm going is all the way to the load the fuck up. <laughs> Take this charge, shit. I can't. I can't do a runner, so shit. <laughs> Push them right. Know your personnel. Know your personnel. So how far can the Cavs go in the East with Donovan Mitchell as their number one option? Yeah. I just. I just told you. Okay. Tell That's me it. again. That's it. Uh, second round. round. Second round, depending on who they play. First round exit. Best case scenario, second round, because the second round they're going to be playing some type of juggernaut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I could agree. Be the bus could be the Pacers right now. So you they're, like, sneaky, they're just as a sneaky team as, as New York. Like, so New man. York can get to the second round depending on who they play <laughs> and, and, and how they <laughs> play <laughs> when they play. Yeah. Yeah. So give, give me a Cavs, Bucks. Let's say they meet in the second round. Everybody's healthy? With Doc Four Rivers one. coaching. Oh, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> you can't forget about ah, that. I forgot Don't forget about, about that. <laughs> forgot about the Doc. Shit. Uh -huh. uh, as, as, much as, I wanted, uh -huh. as much as I wanted to say 4-1, yeah, yeah. I'm going to turn, that's what we looking turn at, it to like, a 4-3, three, seven bucks. game series. It's the Bucks. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's the Bucks. With Doc. Bucks, Doc, the Doc. Bucks go out to a 3-1 lead. That's even more nerve Yeah, yeah. You be sitting like, there you go. You know how bad, think about it. That just lets you know how bad it is. When they go up 3-1, everyone's like, Shit. everyone's like, oh yeah, this is it's better off 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> it's better off 2-2. Two, two. We better off being down. Like, it's not like, yeah, this game is, this series over. You be like, well, oh, yeah. yeah. Here it is. Here we go. <laughs> so, that's fucked up. So speaking of the Cavs, uh, Donovan Mitchell was asked an interesting question. Okay. We don't have it? Oh, good. We'll keep it moving. So I'll just ask you guys the question. Wait, dude. Would you rather take $500,000 or flip a coin for $5 million? Am I not in the NBA answering this question? You are Donovan Mitchell in the year 2024. 
I'm flipping the coin for sure. See, what's funny is Isaac Okoro just said he would take the 500,000. 500,000, easy. All I know is I'm taking that 500K and I'm walking out. Ice, now we know the 500,000 dollars. Now we know the pay difference. <laughs> we just figured it out right here why the in season tournament works. You have a 50% chance of making five, what was it, five million? Five mil. I'm, I'm flipping the coin. I'm sorry, I'm flipping the coin. He's smart. So would you rather take 500,000, yes. you just get that bread, yes. or flip a coin, 50% chance of getting five million? He's smart. Gil, you are rich smart. though. Yeah. Be mindful. 50% chance, yo. But a 50% chance. The, 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 the odds are in your favor. No. Okay, this is this is more of a, a deeper, it's a deeper thing for an athlete, right? So if we went through all our teammates and they asked every single teammate what they would do. Everyone who says 500,000, I probably won't pass the ball to. <laughs> Here, here's, no, here's why. You're being safe. Yes. So you're scared to take the fucking scared, risk. You're scared no, to take the why risk. Why am I being, I'm being safe. smart. How? No, safe. you're scared. Like, you've been scared, like the like uh, uh, scared of losing of something that I have no control over. Something scared losing that you, you don't, don't have. die. You don't, you don't got it. it. <laughs> you don't got it but anyway. I don't have it. You don't have you it. You lose right. nothing by losing. You lose nothing right by before. losing. Right, but I am losing the five hundred. You lose it. You don't have it. No, you don't have it. You don't have it yet. But, but you can't have, have it. Not, it's I the can't same have as the five million. You just getting more money. No. What? What? Think about it. Think. That's what I'm saying. Think about it as like real deep. Like I am risk takers. Right now, before I answer the question, you don't have nothing. Nothing. So I say take 500 or 5 million, right? But you have to flip a coin. You don't have neither one of them yet. Mm. So the fact that you won't flip a coin it's a trick. to get the 5 million will tell an aggressive mind that you're... Smart. No. Intelligent. No, that you're, you're, you're okay. even kill, yep. right? So if I pass you the ball and it's three seconds on the clock, your mind says, don't shoot it because swing you don't it. Swing it, swing, <laughs> swing. It becomes, no. that's, how we, that's yes. how we think. Yes. No. But I'm saying, I'm telling you, that's how we think. We, we're, that's we're, we're, <laughs> I'm taking the shot. But and wait, I'm gonna be happy okay, I think about it this way. Think now. about it this way then, Lex. If I'm the guy with the money and I'm asking you the question, I'm like, all right, would you like to take the 500 or risk getting the 5 million? I'm hoping that you take the 500. Mm -hmm. Right. Because Duh. if you get the five mil, that's more of a, a hit for me. Right. If I give you this, it's like, whew, Good. I'm glad another one, yeah. another one, dummy. Yeah. But, Most of, why, but, but why not take the 500, if you're talking about risk, get in the dub game and turn it into five mil. Oh, my exactly. fucking God. Oh, yeah. Let me go take the 500,000 and then risk going to jail <laughs> because I got to break this down. Pass day me the day rock. I got to find niggas to accept for me. I got to yeah. set up. I got to spend the whole 500 before I even started selling the dope. Nigga, what you talking about? That's what I'm saying. It's a bad investment. It's a mind. I'm just curious. It's more of a mental thing between who's a mentally aggressive and who's passive, right? It's it's bigger than 500 to 5 million, right? It's, it's this trick too. Like, you know how they have game show and they say, all right, pick one, two, or three, right? And then you pick one. And then they say, all right, bigger we're going to remove three. Do you still want to go with one or two? Deal or no deal. Deal or no deal, right? It makes you want to... Well, then before, you open that suitcase with fucking one no, cent in before, it. No, no, no. Yeah. Think about it. Before, I had a 33% chance of winning. Yep. Right? When I picked my original one. You removed one. Now I have a 50-50% chance to, to pick one. Now I got to reconsider. See, m me being safe and staying with like, oh my God, I might have picked the right one. Wait, but do you know what's in it? You don't know what's in You don't know what's in it. Well, that's different than what he asked because you know you have but what I'm saying $500,000. But, but, no, but what I'm saying is you it's a mental... It's still mentally... You know, you can get five million. It's, it's still a mental game. But it's I also know I cannot get five. But million. you don't have it before I ask you the question anyway. So exactly, really you have nothing. So, so Donovan Mitchell, the guy with the glasses, sitting there like, excuse me, well, that's a stupid question. I'm going to take the five million. Well, you know, he's rich. If he, he's matter. not even thinking uh -huh. about being yes, rich. Yes, he's he did. thinking about the odds. No, he's he like, said, "Am I an NBA player?" He said, "Am I no, no, And then no, he said, no, "You're Don." Think about how much you're money Donovan he Mitchell has. in 2020. Because he doesn't need it. He doesn't need the five hundred. But if you said no. He said, that's what he said. That was the, that, that was the other his, scenario. His answer he was might like, have changed. No, but he said, they, that was the scenario <laughs> they gave. They said, he's like, no, I'm, you're Donovan Mitchell right now in 2024. Right. You're not, you don't have no, you're, you're you. You're you. Without NBA, 
Oh, five million. No, no Donovan, Donovan Mitchell in 2024 is, is a rich NBA. man. Now, if you ask Donovan every, Mitchell if you 2024 is rich as now, if you ask all the top players, right? If you ask all the top players, Jim doing it. All your aggressive minds, the Kyries, the Lucas, Giannis's. Right, Giannis might take 500 just to say he's going to take it. But you take all the Jimmy Butlers, all of them, they're going to take 5 million. The ones who think, they're, they're thinking like, I'm, a, oh, I'm, I'm so, too aggressive. So wait a minute. I'm, 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 too, ag I'm too aggressive. They're all rich. Bill. Michael they're Jordan. They're all rich already. No. Michael, this is fun. You, you take Play Michael. Money. You, but that's the problem. An athlete already took the risk. You playing when you were safe. broke, you took the risk. Now you want to play it safe. It's like it's like someone is college basketball. I got up 20 points in the first half, playing aggressive as fuck. Right? You've seen it. You've probably done it. Playing aggressive as fuck. 20. Then when we get up, let's run offense, guys. Yeah. We're gonna yes. five out, five That's out. It. Now we're playing scared basketball That's when it. the other team has still got the engine on and they run the score down and you don't know what the fuck happened. Mm. We played happen because you became you became safe. Yep. Scary. And safe and scary. scary basketball. Scared money don't would, make no money. Scared like, money I like, don't make money. I would like Donovan to be re asked this question, but he is broke. Kobe, Kobe, I'll, 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 I'll answer, answer it. I'll, I'll answer it. Let me answer it. I'm going right now. Let me answer it for him, nigga. Oh, let's fuck down if it asks me, nigga. Kobe. Five uh, million. Five hundred thousand. Make a three. I'm Harvey Dent I'm on the ass. Three, but flipping a coin. Harvey Dent. Yeah. Harvey Dent. <laughs> Flip that motherfucker. Hey, hey, hey. If his head you die, if his tails you live, you live. Harvey Dent. Which okay. one you want? You want to live or you want to die? Mamba, Pick. Mamba mentality. Oh you better on. hope it. Hey, but look. You know, the the gusto. Between, you know the difference between Harvey Dent? It was a two-sided coin. Yeah. You, want me, you want me to tell you what's going to happen? You die Why? anyway. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you. This is, this is what. He's a villain. This is what happens in real life if this actually was a real thing. I'm going to go to you. You're going to say, I'm going to take the 500. I'm going to give you the 500. And I'm going to say, just Flip the coin for shits and giggles. Just for shits. What would you take? And, and then you're like, heads. And then it lands on, it lands on heads. Mentally, you fucked up now. Because you're like, ooh, I could have had five million. Now you don't give a fuck about your 500,000 because now you flipped five million. So that's what I would do mentally yep. to get you. Now the 500 that you picked, you don't even enjoy it anymore because you just flipped. And you got yeah. it. But you got it. You're like, yeah, you yeah, got I got it. it. Yeah, but I flipped. You're like, you can be like, I, I wouldn't be quite as sad if I had 500K to walk with. I, you, it'd be a four. Point five million dollars. The house, the house you could have got, <laughs> compared to the the money you got to spend that five hundred k on. Bro, I'm just trying to get the direct deposit from Underdog Fantasy still, so I'll take that five hundred. Because that's right how that's bank. how the game works. I'm, I'm a, taking the five. Hell yeah, give me I'm that. Taking the five. Go. You want to go? For, I go first. Go first. Hey, uh, what was it? Tell me what. Tell me which one lands on you, what. You, you pick Gil Hazard tails. Huh? Whatever I, you pick, I was led to believe tails. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fails. Heads you win, tails you lose. Heads, heads on the five million. God damn. He got no. it? Oh, oh no. He yeah. went under the sun. It, it would. Sun. Sun. It would go down there. Oh, what did it say? <laughs> it went under the sun. Nope. Oh, you got to reflip it. We'll reflip it. Reflip it. Give just flip a $100 bill. <laughs> oh, my God. This nigga, all, all right. right. Boom. Give me my five milli, baby. What is it? Five million, Five million, Where do you want to go? Where you want to go? Where you want to go? We got two flips. Where you want to go? That was his second flip. Now I feel like the first one was telling me to say shit. Now you go. Now you go. Now you go. Now you go. Now I want five million too. Motherfucker playing my favorite. We doing here? My million. Five million. Chat. What we doing? Okay. Okay. Heads it is. Now my fucking loss. I lose. Uh huh. Now you lost five. Now you got to think about that five million you lost. Five million. Yeah. I have half a million. I'm going back home. I'm going back home. You feel worse than that? No, no, no. I don't. I'm going to call Gil. Hey, Gil. Let me hold something, man. Let me hold something. Let me. Let me. I still feel. I probably feel better than Gil still. Now, Gil, give me, give me the pass. Flip the turn it into flip wood. Fucking Gil, tell. Let me tell you, you don't, you don't deserve it, nigga. You don't fucking deserve. Don't give that nigga. No money. <laughs> now go ahead and give me the password to the safe so I can go put that nickel back. Shit. <laughs> and take Damn, man, years. this nigga won in law. See, you beat me or something, goddamn. Now you keep... see, I'm gonna take the chance every time. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm gonna take it every time, man. Hey, listen. Half a million, bro. Hey, hey, my teacher told me once, and you know, you know how in, in school someone's like, 
I was like, he did it. I, that's why I did it. It was like, well, so if he jumped off the bridge, would you? If he made it, yeah. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> if he jumped off and lived, yes. Hey, here I come. Hey, that's a fucking great. <laughs> if he died. That's a yeah. fucking great answer. Right, did he die? <laughs> nah, I don't think. Did he you. die? <laughs> did he so die, though? No. A little kid asking a teacher that, oh my God, the teacher would be pissed. You already, yeah. already know your ass was in detention. Like, look, my, yeah. I, busted my, I busted my head doing that. I almost died because uh, I was doing backflips off of the, the second floor into the pool. Mm. Right, and I did it the first time, and then the girl was like, I didn't get to see it, do it again. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bing! Oh, <laughs> That's what we call a work-related injury. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That is. Let's, let's, so let's, I'm like, yeah, like, so when girl be like, yo, you, you lost your uh, hair, like, nah, if I bust my head trying to impress a girl like a back flip. Mm -hmm. I, hey, and when I got out of the hospital, back at it! <laughs> Just gotta jump a little further. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all worked with you for several years, and I always had that question, now I know. <laughs> All right, we're gonna Steve in that level. But uh, fresh off being named an All Star and winning Western Conference Player of the Week, Ka Kawhi continued his hot streak on Monday in Atlanta. And we got some Harden too. So Kawhi, let's talk with Kawhi. Kawhi dropped 36 on the Hawks. It was a six straight game with 25 points. Harden also added 30, 10, dimes and seven rebounds. Late in the game, Harden got the buckets going. The, the beard is back. Mm. Kawhi playing. Mm. Little, little dude. Little oh. boy. <laughs> Simple but effective. Hey. And Harden hit this hey. four point play on Trey Young. He <laughs> just be doing it. I love it. Hey. <laughs> I, I want, just, just so y'all know, I, you know they practice, that's, he practice it exactly just like that. Mm -hmm. The and one. That's when, when people are like, yo, how you keep making these difficult shots? Because they sit Shoot, they yeah. sit and practice like they're getting hit yeah. every single time. Bad passes, getting yeah. hit, all that. No, so definitely. Clippers are 26 and 5 since December 1st, won nine of their last 10, 10 games, only a half game out of first in the West. Gilbert Arenas, does anybody in the West want smoke with the Clippers in the playoffs? I mean, they're I mean they're a dangerous team. You know, when we talked about that lineup being put together, you know, we can all see what the potential would be, the capability of them. You know, the only question was, can they play together, right? And time has shown that, you know, they are sacrificing for each other and they are trying to win. Um, you know, the only team that can give them problems would be, you know, Denver, because they're going to try to beat them up down low, which they did in the bubble, right? We're going to use Jokic to try to see if we can pound it down low and, you know, actually uh, see if we can slow this game down. Um, other than that, man, the, the way they're clicking with each other, it, it, it's going to be hard. What's the, uh, what's the Timberwolves record against the Clippers right now? <clears throat> oh, head-to-head? -head? Yeah. Let me see. I think the Clippers are going to finish first in the West. Yeah. Yeah. So I think their first round will be an easy series. Man, the first round is going to be probably goddamn Lakers or some shit. Shit. I don't like the matchup with uh, Clippers Nuggets because it's obvious. And I think Ty Lue already kind of figured out the matchup for that to just to go small. They faced each other one time. Uh, Timberwolves won that game. Won that game. Back I liked I liked back the Timberwolves win, matchup. January 14th. January 14th. So recent. <clears throat> I like the Timberwolves matchup better than I like the Nuggets, uh, even though it's like I said, an obvious pick. You say, all right, the Nuggets look like they're the better, the better matchup. But I look at those, the three-headed monster for the Clippers and then the lack of defense for the Nuggets and the, the, their, their up front three. Yeah. They're not going to be able to guard those three guys. And then Zubak, you know, he ain't going to be able to guard Joker. Uh, but at the same time, if you play without fouling, make it, make it tough for him. It's a long night for Denver if that's the case, right? But then you got the Timberwolves. Now, when you can't put pressure on the guard play of the Clippers and make them play defense and wear them down, even though they got two great defenders, I think the Timberwolves have a better chance because of Ant-Man's ability to do what he does, and they are going to force them into schemes that's going to leave Cat more open and Rudy more open, which is their two-headed monster, where Rudy can come in and get 15 and 17, Cat can go off and shoot three, space in the floor. That's something they don't have an answer for, for the Clippers. So I think that that's something that, to me, is a better matchup. And I still like Minnesota coming out number one 
And even though the Clippers are playing well, everybody else in the West need to step up. I think that that's the main thing, is they're allowing the Clippers and the ability to have that roster to scare the fuck out of everybody in the West because they're playing well. Yeah. But it's like, step the fuck up. Just come up to the challenge because they're not going to stop what they're doing. They're going to go all the way to the edge. But it's like, what are the Lakers going to do? What is Sacramento going to do? We see the Golden State, they crashing. But, you know, what are the Suns going to do? Are the Suns going to actually step up to the fucking plate and be a big three like we thought you were going to be? So funny that you mentioned the Suns. And obviously, we're only in the hypothetical stage right now. But if the playoff started today, the number three seed Clippers would face the number six seed Suns. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> We talked about turning up the playoffs for last yeah, year, that'd... but this... That's a great matchup. It's a lot of buckets. Mm. Yeah, that, but if I'm Clippers or I'm Suns, the one team I do want to play is Minnesota. Because you have Ant-Man, but your Ant-Man, we have three of those. Yeah. But at least right? we have one. The other teams but, don't have But that's what I'm saying. You have Ant-Man. When you're playing against us in the playoffs... Kawhi is going to get calls over Ant-Man. Paul George is going to get calls over Ant-Man. And Cole, uh, Harden will get calls over Ant-Man. So the three of them is going to get the benefit of the down over Ant-Man. He's young. He's not going to get the... the and then you have your point guard, um, uh, Conley. He's outmatched mm-hmm. as a starter and off the bench. You know, with Russell, he's going to try to take advantage of that. right? Ant-Man is going to even out his matchup. Um, then your three is... McDaniels? No, nah, who's the three? Yeah. For who, the Timberwolves? Yeah. McDaniels. Yeah. You're outmatched. But right. that's, all, that's, that's forcing guard play, which is what but, we want in our favor. We want to make you all shoot jump shots. That's all we do anyway. So, uh, it's, you're, so you're outmatched. And then Carl Anthony, I mean, it's not like you post up, so you're not going to really take advantage of Kawhi Leonard like you think you are. Right, you know, so. But that may be the, because we so, can. If we needed to take advantage of that. Can. If, if we needed to. to. If he pulls yeah, if up. if he chooses then, to, then that changes the dynamic of how the Clippers actually guard it. Are yeah. we giving up 60 points? 60 points to, to who? Paul Town, Carl. You don't post- he has the ability to no, do he that. No, he all them three, now, though. No, but three. he still has the ability to take the ball to the He's basket. Not scoring so, yeah, so he has to drive to the basket on, go- on a great guard defender. You're not fast. But- you going against a, a Rudy type, yeah, makes it easy, but you're going against a guard, so I'm going to sit under you. What ends up happening is when, this is what happens with them, when you make Carl a post-up player, Ant-Man can't drive. No, for sure. So, because you have Rudy down there, too. So, Rudy can't spread the floor. So, now you got two bigs down there. Ant-Man which... can shoot. He okay. can get his shot off in the perimeter, but which means space the floor. I got a can't... big offensive rebounder. Now, if I do miss on the block, mm-hmm. he's who's going to block him out weak side if I got the biggest guy on me? If I got a smaller guy on me, it's mouse in the house. I just need to be disciplined enough to continue this without forcing up jump shots and turning around, doing little shit. Back to the basket. Mouse in the house. Cat, go back to your original game that you that wasn't in the, as a, <laughs> and then lead with. He didn't have the jumper initially. Mm-hmm. He was a big. He established the jumper, which took him away from being a, a step. Yeah, now he don't want to go down. He don't want to go down. Well, that's there. what I'm saying. Because now it's like, well, why? Why? Now we're like, look, this is why. Why? Because posting up was harder for him. Because he didn't have the advantage. He has the advantage That's what the I'm foot. saying. I got the yes. advantage on the foot. Same thing with, with Giannis. I have the advantage facing up versus me trying to post up. But when me, you had bigger guys to go up against, you knew that your post game wasn't as polished to go up against those guys. Now I got Kawhi Leonard. I'm like, oh, yeah, he ain't going to guard yeah. me like they was guarding me. Cool. Yeah, but you, you ain't been doing that for five years now. You just ain't going to inherit. <laughs> you just ain't going to inherit the post game. Because ain't no, big, ain't no bigs in the league no more. Ain't no bigs in the league that's going up against him anymore. So, you know, Stephen Adams is probably the only motherfucker that was really like, uh, I'm not having none of that shit today. Yeah, just, so just that, gonna have, they're going to have to prioritize. Some like the high, low, the high low game would be amazing if um, Rudy was the post up guy. So Rudy's posting up and he's the danger down there. Now you have. Um, Towns, they double, I can shoot. Right, right. Now, is this just reverse? Uh, yes, yeah, <laughs> That's what I say. For, for uh, Rudy, it would be doghouse offensive rebound. Yeah, sitting Get it off the glass, right? Mm-hmm. Which is been more beneficial for them because we don't have to depend on him doing anything out of his element. But Stay under the rim, get everything off the glass. We play big, we force them to adjust. But you can't give them a style that they just don't have. You can't make them do something they don't do. That's the problem in the playoffs. They don't do what you want them to do, right? To be, like, 
to, for them to take advantage of the Clippers and change the game, they don't do that, though. Right, that's, that's the only the part, part. That's the part of the scouting report, like you said, that big book that the Finch is going to have to come in there and, and display to the team. Hey, 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 guys, look, I know we've been doing this well, but this series, we're going to have to put a whole We're going to have to change some shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're, Again, that's we're pri prioritizing a certain style yes. of play and a certain player. So yes. the, the coaches can give them the book, but if the players yeah. don't care about the book, yeah, I'm gonna, it's, it's playoff basketball now, like you said. I'm going to put in a whole bunch of plays you've never seen. And we're going to do uh, four down. Regular season, though. Regular <laughs> season is, is regular season, right? Yeah. Playoff comes. Yeah, it's different. Now we got a whole new playbook, a yeah. whole new scheme, because everyone knows what we've been doing all season. That's how we played the game. Mm -hmm. They did this all season, didn't play us. So we like. That's how we won in Chicago. We changed our com we changed our ball screen coverage completely. Oh, the defense. Yeah, defensively. Yeah. Offensively, nothing n nothing much changed, but we did shift our like offense a little bit to benefit one player more than yeah. in the regular season, but our defensive schemes, we've changed everything. So imagine as a coach and a team that you be able to adjust on the fly like that. It makes you a good team and a good coach where I can come in and say, you know what? They're going to expect us to do what we've been doing. So we different. are playing a different team. This series, we're going to change it up completely. They're used to this. They're going to expect us to go small and match up with them. Let's stay big for the first two games and see what happens. Now, if we go down 1-0 and we're like, all right, the second game, you think we had a chance to win that first game if we keep doing this? Let's try it again. Now, let's make a couple adjustments, come back, and if we can get this game, we like this. But if we don't, oh, shit, we need to 2-0. Yeah. Uh, Man, that's series over. Yeah. Seriously, you know what I'm saying? 2-0 is like, damn. But if we could steal one trying to go back to our original that, format, you know what I'm saying? The crib. Yeah. You lose two games at home. Yeah, you lose two games at home. It's over. Done. Yeah. So good. But if it's on the road, you know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, it's expected. Okay, we can it's expected. It yeah, 2-0 yeah. mm -hmm. at home is crazy. It's different, yeah. yeah. Gil, I know you're a big fan of Ty Lue. Do you think Ty Lue should be a coach of the year candidate? Obviously, people could say, oh, look at this Absolutely. roster. Anybody could do it. But he had to figure this out on the fly. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, um, the coach of the year is just, you know, it, it, it shouldn't have nothing to do with record in a sense. It should, you know, you know, the things that were put on you, your record. I mean, your 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 schedule, right? The things that was going on, trades, this player, this player coming in, how many games was missed, right? How did your team? You lost your best player. You still got wins, right? That, right? Like the coach for the Cleveland Cavaliers. That is amazing, right? That should be a candidate for coach of the year himself because you're missing your second best player. You're missing your 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 third option. These two guys are out. Mobley's out, Garland's out, and you're still racking up wins. That is a great coach, right? Everything that's coming at you, you're still finding ways to win. That's a great coach, right? That should be, you know, in that category of coach of the year, just like, you know, Ty Lu. So yeah, I think, you know, with some of the elements that's been pushed his way, but you know, for the most part, his talent alone kind of you had to put it on a curve, right? You know, you have four bona fide Hall of Famers guaranteed when they retire, so you don't get the benefit of the doubt. Right? <laughs> you know what I mean, you don't, shout, shout out you know to the Baker staff and Cleveland. Yeah, you going fifteen. You going fifteen in a row? We, you were like. Yeah, yeah, that's what you, you know. You got the talent, Baker staff. You went fifteen in a row with that roster. That's like, wait a minute. I think, it's, <laughs> I think to me, it's, it's two different metrics because Cheryl, you know, she was saying about how when she played on that USA team, it was the hardest thing she had to do to adjust because we're playing with a bunch of great players and it's like, how do we all mesh, right? So for Ty Lue to mitigate all those abilities and to mesh them into a winning attitude without having to break apart what they're used to doing, which is having the ball and ISO ball and figuring out how to actually please the egos. And for Russ to buy into it, for PG to wake up and say, I'm on my bully shit and actually prove it. For uh, Kawhi not to have say, to say anything, but still being an MVP caliber type of player. Um, James Harden coming in and not le losing a step at all when it comes to after I adjust, I can go back to being me. So you look at JB, he don't have none of those criterias of four Hall of Famers, X, Y, Z. He's just mitigating strategy what you have to deal with with injury and structure. We're going to play hard. We're going to play together. We're going to come here, and we're going to do what we need to do to win and be in every game. And if we can allow our superstar 
or our star to come in here and take us over the top at the end, we can win us a bunch of games. What we can beat easy. anybody. Which situation is the harder coaching situation? Uh, <laughs> bigger staff is because he has to rely more on his schemes. Yep. Um, his schemes, you know, sub rotations, right? His his players hitting shots at the right time. Ty Lu, his biggest thing would be just ego management. Yep. Right? You know, the talent itself, putting them in a situation to be successful. You know, with him, it's like, well, if one guy's off or one player has an attitude, I still got three of them. Yep. Right? right? You know, bigger staff, if Donovan Mitchell doesn't play well, our chances of winning at this point is mm. not going to happen. So there's two different things that they're doing, right? One is ego. Like, he has to make sure everyone's ego. Hey, how you feeling? Oh, you good? You good? Okay, Kawhi's fine. PG, everything good? The play is calling, right? Russ, we could, we, okay. Right? So his game is a lot different mentally than bigger staff. Right. So, you know, that's why I said they're both here. But, you know, if they it finish with the same record, I would give it to bigger staff because... Yes. There's no way you should be you. There's no way with the lineup he has and the team he has, he should be two. Yeah. Period. And, yeah. and that goes. <laughs> so there's no fuck. You guys put uh, OKC or Minnesota coach in this coach of the year conversation because they're so young. So Dagnall is uh, currently leading the coach of the year odds, followed by Chris Finch, I'm, Ty Lue, Rick Carlisle, and then JB Bickerstaff. Is when you look at just an odds, the Dang. rotations, right? When you talk about Bickerstaff, him have his only issue would be I gotta keep Donovan on the floor. Mm -hmm. Donovan, we got an agreement. Mm -hmm. You can't get in foul trouble. Mm -hmm. You gotta play defense without fouling. Mm -hmm. Jared, I need you to control the paint. I need you to rebound the ball. We need rebounds. These are the only two guys. I, everybody else, <laughs> fall the fuck in line. Trust my scheme. Trust the strategy. Make your shot. Right? Mm -hmm. So think about what he has. It's a risk for him. It's an actual investment. He's like, yo, I got to believe that these guys are going to buy in. He's not going to get in foul trouble because if you're not on the floor, we have no chance That's of winning. Right. The other guys, you got three, four, five different players that can actually help you stay in the game. Right? And then, you know, between SGA, Chet, uh, Giddy, Dort, all these guys can play. Williams, they can, they can play. And then you look at Ty Lue and them, it's like, you're just mitigating egos. Mm -hmm. You don't really have a lot of coaching that you have to do, yeah. right? So I think, to Gil's point, JB would be the front runner for that because Garland's not there, Mobley's not there, which is his other three, like two-headed mm -hmm. monster, mm -hmm. that he wouldn't have as much stress mm -hmm. to deal with based on... Donovan, I need to keep you on the floor at all times. Or if Donovan got in foul trouble, Garland, all right, it's time for you to show up, take over. So these are the things that you got to take into consideration. So we asked the chat, uh, should people fear the Clippers? Should teams fear the Clippers in the playoffs? 73% uh, said yes. 27% said no. Let's move to the East. Uh, Got to talk about Dame. Uh, despite being named an all-star starter, Damian Lillard has had some growing pains figuring out his role with the Bucks. During a recent interview with Yahoo Sports, Dame talked about making the transition from Portland to Milwaukee and the issues he's dealing with off the court. So Dame said the following, as much as I love basketball and I love my job, I don't care about it more than I care about my kids. Of course, you carry it with you. People say when I hoop, I ain't thinking about nothing, but I'm not 21. I got three kids, I'm tight with my family, and I'm going through a divorce. Mm. Mm -hmm. So is Dane making excuses for his recent struggles or is the struggle just that real as an NBA hooper? I, mean, I said it last time we talked about it when people were like, should he be, be concerned about Dame? And I was like, I mean, he got a lot going on outside of those lines personally. <laughs> so for him to come out and say that, I, mean, I think that's good because like athletes are still people. They're still <laughs> humans. Like, I know sometimes fans and media members forget that. So I think it was good for him to come out and say that. It's not easy. It's easy to forget because there's nothing in your, in a fan's life or media's life that has anything to uproot them, right? You know, the only thing they got to do is go to Atlanta and do a show for a day and they get to come back home. You know, they get to do that. Like even a divorce, right? Wherever you work, your place, you're there. When you're talking about someone who built his life in Portland, outside of Oakland, Portland, they said he moved 50 people with him. 
family kids, like he has his structure of go home, kiss the kids. That, like, there's a routine that right. keeps him balanced. So when he leaves and now all of it is left, his whole identity is left, right? He's back into his college day mentally where he hasn't been there for damn near 15 years. Changes, it changes, you know, the, 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 the home cooked meal, the, the late night talks, the study and the playing with the kids, the relaxation, right? So now most of your life, you know, most of your day is, you know, what is the kids doing? I mean, you know what I mean? So it, it would put a lot of stress. I, I can understand now that because of mentally I went through the gun thing, right? Which threw everything off mentally for me. Right, waking up, not understanding that you know life has changed. I'm not who I am. The media don't like me. This don't like me. I'm throwing up every morning, not knowing why I'm throwing up every morning. It was a different adjustment for me. I didn't have the same mentality I had when I was in Washington. Right, and you don't know it until you go through it. Mm -hmm. Right, so I understand where Dame is mentally because I had a taste of it. Now, if I never had a taste of it, I'd be like, oh, now he's just making an excuse. Man, this is nothing. It's just like being on the road, man. You know, just by like being on the road. But when well, being on the road, you can FaceTime your, your kids. Right? You can FaceTime. Right. When you're going through the divorce, they ain't no goddamn FaceTime. Right. <laughs> huh? Hey, let me see my kids. Shut up. Where the money at? Click. <laughs> like, that's a whole different. <laughs> that's a whole. <laughs> you out there going to the game. You had a nice moment. No, you know, you're going to the game. You get certain. Think, think about it. I'm walking. So close. I'm walking off TNT, y'all. Listen, TNT, I'm walking on ESPN. I got served child support papers at halftime. That's crazy. Think about that. That's crazy. Hey, can I get an autograph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. You have been served. That's <laughs> smart. What? Huh? Damn. Damn. You sit there. You sit there. Hey, coach, second half, hey, Gil. Like, uh, we. Dog. <laughs> My whole face is. What? What <laughs> What'd you talking about? Gil, chill out. I, like, I, I, sir, it had on TV. Did they see this on TV? Dave is not playing <laughs> terrible not, either. But, it's by Dave's like, standards, what's we'll odd. Like, yeah, that's what I said. By Dave's Dame standards, not to though. act like he's just a bum now or anything like that. Yeah. Obviously, he's starting in the All-Star game. He's done well. Right. But just figuring that out, and people will point and say, well, hey, you, you asked for the trade. You asked for this. And that's fine, but you don't know what the situation is going to be like till you get there. Then you start having to deal with it. In Milwaukee, a nice city. But that's not where but, you wanted to be. I mean, you know, it, 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 this is more. This is probably more just like the stability of his household. Yeah. More than the the city. I mean, he's fucking in Portland. You know, I, mean, I don't give. A nice city, Gil. You know, I ain't in Portland, but you get to sit I in the house Portland with your a nice place. You get nice to sit place. in the house with your family base versus you sitting in the house by yourself now. They used to pump the gas for you there. <laughs> we really frown upon you doing it yourself. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, it's like McCann's, right? You know, if you used to, you know, if you used to all your work switch, you, right? You know, you know, your work's helping you do this scheme, playing, massaging your legs and all that. And then now all the work is gone. <laughs> you, you sitting there like, yo, what is, hey, I'm missing number rotation. Get on over here. But there's always a solution. And what is the solution? <laughs> Ling Ling do, do my, just magical things. <laughs> I need all the work. I just need one simple service. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 mental health is a real thing. I get it. <clears throat> but I come from an era of mental toughness being the hard hat. Yeah. Right? Mm hmm So when you say, is it an excuse? Should there be an excuse? Do we all go through things that are out of our control, in our control, all of these different things, right? So Clay Thompson, did he have an excuse? I don't think he had no excuse. Who? We're gonna talk about no, that. Uh, you got one now. I mean, just, <laughs> just, but just the fact that he may be going through something we don't know about. Um, you know, Kobe, when he had the, the situation, had to go through that. Mm -hmm. We seen it. He didn't say that there was an excuse. I'm going through this with my wife and do, 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 do. Show up. Let's show out. Let's do what we got to do. I mean, even for myself, when I was in college, 2005. My mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Nobody knew it. It was the Duke game when I found out. Immediately, it formed an intestinal disorder for me, and I was out four games. None of my teammates visited. Nobody asked if I was okay. My mom came from remission to come take care of me. So the things that I was going through personally, I couldn't let bother what we were trying to accomplish. So when I got back on the court, it wasn't about an excuse. It was about 
I came here to finish the job. So for whoever's going through anything, the one thing I learned when I got to the league is this is a man's league. This is a man's league. And it, to me, has stopped becoming that because everyone's starting to use this mental health thing as the excuse to why things are not getting done. Mm -hmm. Because if things can get done, we wouldn't even hear a quote. We wouldn't say, well, I'm not performing because... It's like at the end of the day, you're getting paid $250 million and you should be performing regardless of what you're going through. But is it unfair? Could be, because emotions do matter. Family does matter. But at the end of the day, we're here to play the game, right? So I just come from a different cloth that whatever you're going through, if you can't play, don't play. If it's bothering you to the point that you need to step away from the game, step away from the game because we would understand that if it was that severe if not let's fight through that shit let's get in the gym and stay in the gym just like gil said when he missed those free throws man i was in the gym every fucking day for seven hours trying to get this shit make sure i never miss a free throw again if you're in a slump you know you got to shoot to get out of it but i mean even just looking at dame I appreciate him for at least being candid and open at this stage of his career and just talking about the situation you guys deal with as Hoopers. <clears throat> when you're young, you don't have a lot of shit going on, right? I mean, obviously, you always will in life, but as you get older in life, responsibility, kids, family, all that other stuff, that's still just as meaningful to you as the game. But how much do off-court issues impact off-court performance? Like you said, you found out your mom got diagnosed. But if nobody knows, nobody cares, Yeah. right? So let's keep it that way. Yeah, and, but I think we've always been trained to like, whatever's going on in our life, like that's our personal shit. I'm not telling It's like that. as a man, you say, don't cry. Mm -hmm. And don't cry. Like if whatever it is, bro, suck it up because we can use that against you. Yeah. Now that we have, we have ammunition to say he has a weak point. Mm -hmm. We can see it. He's going through something, so he's not all the way there. Mm -hmm. We can see that. So now that it's public, it's like it's obvious that he has just identified something more is going on in his life that is bothering him. So that becomes ammunition for a guy like me. I don't give a fuck. Oh, I'm definitely at you now, especially every matchup. It's like, oh, you're, you're at a weak point. There is no empathy, sympathy for me at that point, maybe off the court. If I'm your mans, I'm gonna call you and be like, yo, let's go get some lunch, let's go, let's talk about this shit. But look, when I'm, I'm on the floor against you, you just showed me that you can cry. I mean, you know, you're, you're right. You're right. Like, we're going to use whatever you're going through against you, right? That's just, that's the point of, you know, mental health, right? Mental health is a real thing. We all go through it. But for the most part, the lions are never going to show you their weakness because the other lions don't give a fuck. Right, I don't give a shit what you're going through. This is, hey, I couldn't beat you for the last five years, and you got a weak point now. I'm getting my get back. All of a sudden, I'm getting my get back, and yeah. that's how we think, mm -hmm. right? Like, but if you look at, if we go to everyone's schedule and look at a down point in their life, we're looking at Clay Thompson right now in real time. When he retires. And then he comes up and says, oh, I was going through a real tough time. Mm -hmm. And he don't give us no date and say, yeah, this girl, this, 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 this. We can all say, ah, I, I know what year this was. Mm -hmm. And then you can go because his play matches it mentally. Yep. Right? When we say, hey, LeBron James, what happened to you in the finals and you played bad? Everybody can say, you played bad. No one's going to ever say, well, do y'all know what the media was doing? The media was saying his wife was sleeping with this player and put this bullshit out. Mentally, won't you think about what that what that'll do to you? Yep. My wife, what? Read you reading in the paper. Now you got to sit there and ask questions. You got to call this dude. Is this real? You're not gonna say. You're gonna look at the stats and use the stats against him, but you're not gonna use the media tactic that would happen. Right. Right. You're not gonna use the media tactic. Oh, he couldn't beat the Boston Celtics. Well, how about look at the article that came out during that whole series, too? Oh, your teammate is sleeping with this. What, what are you mentally trying to do? Like, you're not going to think that's going to affect the person and make him think about that. 
and you guys see all of that, right? I think. Yeah, a, a we lot see of it in real time. Like we know, we like we we you sit here and watch it. Can, we can sit there and try to play tough and this and this, but it's called it's the problem with it is when you're trying to deal with when you're trying to get under someone's skin, like Carmelo. Yeah. No matter how tough Carmelo is, you say something that makes him second guess. Yes. Life. Yes. You get a different reaction. Yes. Fuck the game. Like, what's up with this? Is this real? Like, it makes you think you're you're targeting something that I have it. It's a real feeling. Then you say, like the LeBron point, that's what beat you. Yeah. That's what they didn't beat, beat you. you. No. You beat you. You let that thing dominate your mind and take it, the your mind off the goal. So if you can allow that to happen. We know you're not as Superman as we thought. But no one's Superman. Exactly. Like, you know, Michael Jordan and his father. Exactly. I'm pretty sure if he was playing in real time when that happened, that would have affected his game. Yep. yep. It's, just, it's just a real thing, right? I mean, you, you know, some people are... We can pretend to, like, shut it off and we're hurting inside. Some people can say, all right, I'm going to... Like, Kobe, I'm going to use whatever I'm going on the outside and perform on. That's a whole different breed of a dude. Right, you know, there's that's rare. He's rarity where he can turn his pain and use the pain part onto this this court, and use whatever his frustration is to take it out on his opponent. But Not every there's a diff but there's a difference when the person that I'm 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 caring for that has my back is being questioned. That is a whole different thing. Absolutely. Parents is a whole different thing. Kids is a whole different thing. Yep. It's just it's just hard. And, you know, sometimes that we can try to hold it in, you know, like the Andrew Wiggins, right? Yep. He's missing games. Mm -hmm. And we, they're talking about, oh, it's your, your father. Think about, the, think about the shit that's going on. You, you, those two kids ain't yours. They ain't yours. That but, was ridiculous. Now, but think about the story. He is dealing with his father's situation, right? His father's situation. Now he wakes up and reads those two kids... Those two kids might not be yours. What do you think runs through his brain at that time? I look right at my what? I had to, you know, you, you sitting there like, babe, what? Yeah. Like no, now you making him second guess his like he's the reason he's suspended is I mean not uh, missing is because of this, right? You know, up in heart's father. Now you throw this in. Now he has to look and so what, Google, and but, I got to check my kid's blood to see if this is a real thing. But at what point do you have to step in to advocate for yourself so stuff like that does not happen? But can you do yes, that? Yes, because you want to mm -hmm. be a private person, which is, that, I think that's why when Dame is coming out saying these things, everyone's kind of like, oh shit, because Dame is a relatively private person when it comes mm -hmm. to stuff like this. But when you allow people to sit and just like, just make, I mean, it happened make to me up. when I was really sick. They were saying all types of weird shit about me not being around the team and being not at games and practices and stuff. And I'm a private person, so I kind of just let that sit. And I wouldn't change that approach at all, but you got to be a mentally fit person. That's what I'm saying. It's the resilience. Yeah. The perseverance and understanding that I know me well enough to know I can get through this. Yeah. And if I cannot, I'm not going to put myself in danger and people around me in danger. So I'm going to step back and say, look, this is a little bit too much. I'm overwhelmed with the fact that I miss my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm going through something that I didn't think I would ever go through which is a divorce. divorce. Mm -hmm. And if he's a real religious guy and he's like, death do us part, these are real vows that I... These are things that do wear on you. So you have to take a step back and think about it, but you have a contract, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. like that vow, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you can break your contract, just like the, the vows were broken. Or you can step in and say, you know what? I'm not going to let this break me because this, try this is trying to break me mm -hmm. and I'm not going to let my kids see me broken. They're going to see daddy is a superhero. Daddy is the guy that's going to come through for them with a smile on his face every time. I'm going to do whatever I got to do. And if that's winning a championship to get my family back, let's take that approach. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just altering perception of, you know, how you can just mentally manage it. You know, it's, you know, it's, but, you know, for the most part, you know, we're... We're used to doing things a certain way, and we have our what do we what do we call it? Superstition. Yep. All right. Superstition might be my kids kiss my kids, go to bed. Yeah. There's you know. So when you take away my superstition, now I'm vulnerable to. Yeah. You know. So 
let's talk about Clay a little bit. Uh, season has been a struggle for Clay Thompson. Final year is deal with the Warriors. His basketball future is uncertain. Clay was benched for the final seven minutes against the Nets Monday night. Appeared visibly frustrated on the bench, and after the game, he spoke on it. How are you feeling right now? I mean, I know you kind of feel great. Yeah, physically, mentally, probably a little different story. Such is life. You know? When you say that, I mean, just is it just the shooting struggles? Shooting. Uh, just, yeah, you know, pride myself in. Yeah. That stuff, so. What are they talking about? You ain't played to finish the game? I got best game five of the finals. Who the fuck cares? Well, I haven't asked that yet, but I will now, if you know. Huh? I said I haven't asked it yet, but I Oh, can't. you feel like you're about to. I'll ask you for real. Already. Uh, I mean, you, all, you didn't post tonight. That's obviously going to be a story. I mean, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. These guys play great. He yeah. played great. BP, Jonathan. In a day, we need troops on. Is this... Is this an adjustment period for you a little bit? I mean, he's done it a few games, obviously. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Go yeah. from, you know, one of the best players. It's hard for anybody. You know? yeah. I'll be honest with you. So, how hard is it dealing with the reality that you're not the same player you used to be? And it seems like we're seeing this in real time with Clay throughout this season. He's shown flashes of... of he wanted players. to cry. He wanted to cry. <laughs> That's the emotion. I just want to know, like, what I know. Reporters have to do their job, but I'm just like, what is the benefit of posting a video like that of a player? We could, we could be. It's called media. It's I called know, but I'm yeah. just like, we nope. we're sitting here talking about mental health and being strong, and but you like. That's a, part, gotta, but that's, that's a part of why you got to have mental health because there's always an attempt to break you yeah, at but, every moment. This but is, just in defense, Anthony Slater who posted a video, uh, a good dude. Just yeah. in his defense, Clay drops 50. I'm, I'm going to be in there doing the same thing. Okay. Whatever, the, whatever the stories are, that's right. what I'm trying to okay, cover. Okay, but, that, but that's the difference between analysts and player, player podcasting now, right? A player would never have done this to to Clay. Yes. Because we've been there question. before. We would have never asked this. We would have never asked that. We would have never went down those lines because our angle is not a narrative of how you played and the negativity of it. And then that's why players don't like media. We don't like talking to media because you know that you know I... exactly how I feel. Yes. I'm sitting on the bench. You're going to ask me how I feel. What am I supposed to say? Oh, it fucking feels great. Yeah, I'm Clay Thompson. You know, I'm over here bragging about my four rings and I came off the bench. Oh my God, I feel so. Can't wait for him to do it next game. Mm. Is that what I'm supposed to say? Because if I say what I really feel, what are you going to write then? Clay Thompson spazzes in the locker room. He throws all of his coaches under the bus. He throws the players under the bus because I had a real emotion. So now I got to say some bullshit to, to, to not be. It's called being politically correct. Yeah, I got to be politically, yes. As athletes always are. We are always expected to give the politically correct answer. What's different here? But this generation is known now to be okay with being sensitive and emotional. Mm. And in the face of, uh, let's just keep it real. Yeah, I have a problem with this. Now, if that conversation have, happens off the camera, right? It was like, no, nah, I'm going to be real with you, bro. There was a good question in there. And I didn't answer it the way you think mm -hmm. I should have, but now nah, I'm having a problem for sure. But politically correct, we want to be able to send a message to our fans, mm -hmm. to my teammates. Mm -hmm. Everything is okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Hey, look, we won. <laughs> we won. <laughs> I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say anything is wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't. I mean, ask, asking him that after a win is odd. It's now, not. Had, it's a test. If they had lost, a test. it would make a little bit more sense. It's a test. How selfish me, can you me. be? Yeah, how selfish How selfish you really are you? You won. Us. As I said, you won. It's like, this is a, you're asking me a selfish question, hope, hoping I, I give yes. you something. Yes. Yeah. For you to make a splash and get your name all over the media. Media training. Stupid. That's That's what they taught you in college. If you took the course and you listened, Watch the trap questions. Yeah, trap questions. No, trap Think questions, about yeah. what you answer right so after for you. the game now, in your locker room. Yep. Like now, 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 as as fans, you watching. If we're taught to not to answer certain questions certain ways, the media standpoint on the stuff we say is what fake. Then mm -hmm. we're not. They're not giving media real questions, real answers, because we are supposed to say exactly what. 
you want to hear. So that means when you're hearing your player say certain things, Joel Embiid, oh yeah, I'm not after the MVP, you know, with the championship in the finals, yeah. And then say, oh yeah, Embiid, you, you, you can only miss five more games. Oh shit, let me go out there and play. <laughs> what? I thought you talked about the finals and the MVP, goddammit. Because you would be sitting down. But no, that's not how you feel. But you know, if you say something selfish, they're going to run their narrative yes. around it. Yes. Knowing... God damn, if I told you you have to do seven interviews in the next three hours to get this bonus, bitch, you're going to be doing seven interviews, you're going to do nine interviews to, get to, to, to meet your quota. Everybody's going to do it, mm -hmm. right? That's just human nature, but you're going to only pick on me because I have to say something correct. You're allowed to be a dickhead, I'm not. Yep. Right. Can you be That's a That's the problem. You are not allowed. This, was that a professional question? How do you no. feel? Well, no, that's not How do you not. feel about not playing in the last so, tail end of the That's of not the a professional quarter. question. Clay, See, that's, that's, that's media. You're not a professional. We just won the game. We just we won. We just won the game. Who that's gives a, a... That's a trap question. Who gives a fuck? 100%. Who gives a fuck if I, I, met, I, I sat on the bench seven minutes? We who won. cares? We, we won. won. Period. We won. It's we, a trap you question. see the difference between media yes. and a player? Yes. A professional question is, hey, you guys won. How about you, how you like to win? Boom, boom, boom. Keep it fucking moving. Yes. Don't make it a personal question when you know it's trigger question. Yep. So no, in our defense as players, that's not professional nope. at all. Nope. So if I ask you a question that has something to do, hey, I know you got laid off. Um, <laughs> How you gonna pay your rent? Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> hey, I know, hey, I know, I know everybody on your team, everybody on your team kept their job, but not you. So what are you gonna do next? Mm. Mm. You're gonna sit there like you fucking dickhead. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> unfortunately, you let me ask Jalen Rose how he feels. Mm. Hey, I know you just got fired, but fuck all that. How does it feel that you don't have your job right now and they just hired someone else in your position? Well, how do you feel? He will have a he will have a politically correct answer. Hey, no, no, it's just no, you know, we're just gonna work on some things and try to get, and you say, all right, camera's off, how do you feel? Man, these mother, what? That's who they hired, they had a this, this, this. That's his real answer. And why would he have a politically correct answer? Because he wants a job. I want a job. job. Down the line, yeah, so I, I want, want a job. job. <laughs> I don't want to show them. I, I, I have real problems <laughs> with motherfuckers over there in, the, in, in the ESPN. Fuck all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not gonna you say that. You know what? Hey, yeah. But as, as journalists, you want a job too, and sometimes as journalists, you gotta ask the hard, difficult questions. Now, if you see Clay bench for the last seven minutes, looking visibly upset on the bench while the team is winning, you're gonna ask him about that. He can you give whatever answer is one. If you actually watched yeah. the game, you would be like, ah. These are obvious things that but, not the fans want to know. It's but the, the media wants to know. But that's the difference. On the same side, though, question. now Clay dropped 16, 11 dribbles. I'm gonna ask you about that because that's what happened. That's the storyline. Well, they won't. But but it can't always just be the good shit. Is what I'm saying, right? Yeah, no, no, it is. Yeah. It, it is. is. Like, why no, no, it's not that. We, why, why, we won. Why, why does there need to be a negative to the it's win? It's the obvious. Don't, don't, don't state the obvious when you see it, because that's what I'm going to say. Why I used think? to be an asshole with shit like that. I'm like, was you watching the fucking game, bro? Obviously, you see me over here looking like this, like this the whole fucking time, and, and we winning. <laughs> I'm not supposed to have this energy. But you come in here and ask me, so why was you so visibly, you look like it? Yeah, but on the same breath, if he would have just wrote an article trying to get himself into your mind, oh, Rashad was... No, that's like, different. What, 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 I don't what, have a reply. But you'd be I don't salty. have a reply. You'd be salty because But what you I'm saying is, about. why are you writing an article that has to do with me being benched for seven minutes? Why can't you have an article that the Golden State Warriors won? Bam. Because you're... Bam. Whoever, whoever was playing did a great job in the last right seven minutes. Yeah, because you're, right. you're a fan. That's, that's it. it. That's what I'd rather you write about him and what he did great in the last Kaminga. seven minutes. Kaminga, he wants to Ooh. get some shine. He did great. I ain't playing. He's interviewing Kaminga. I'm saying, but if you're a four-time champion, right? Right? The team is struggling this year. You're in the last year of your deal. This is information that people want to know. That's what I'm saying. No, it's not people want to know. H how do you think it's easy for Draymond to know what you're about to say because he can come in there and he realized, oh, he's a dighead. Yep. And I know he's going to ask this. So it's easy. Oh, so well, you want to know that he got bench seven minutes? How, how does Draymond know exactly what question you're going to ask? Because all you do is just think negative. Draymond asked the question <laughs> first, though. But I'm saying, it's just think it, negative. Boom, up. we got you. <laughs> It's easy. But let's talk about Draymond a little bit. How much does it mean to have a teammate like Dray Draymond in that locker room to try and help you keep your head up when you're going through a tough time? It, 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 it is great because he doesn't have to be, he's learned how not to be um, politically correct. 
So he gets to say what the whole room is thinking. He can look at Clay's face and say, all right, he's, he's feeling uncomfortable. Let me go ahead and say something. Get him out of it, right? And, and you, you have teammates like that. There's teammates where you're sitting there and then someone's trying to stir something. Now you remember Jason Williams? I think that's just scrubbed off the internet where he's like, give me that pen. No, he can't write no article in here. He took the pen and threw the pen. It's like, don't answer no. He, and, and you have teammates that do that. Right? It's like, this is a team. Why are you trying to divide us? Exactly. That's the problem. Like, think about the, the, the overall look. Yeah, I, I didn't play the last seven minutes. Cool, right? We won. But I have to deal with that emotionally. But you're making me think about it. Like, why? Are you upset? Who, who, who was in your... Did they deserve to play in your minutes? Like, you start doing that in there, it starts making me look at the other person. But who else knows it? You know who else knows that I didn't play seven minutes? All of the fucking players on the team <laughs> and the fucking coach, which is why Draymond can come in there and be like, oh, they talking about that shit, they talking about that shit, they just, you ain't played the last minutes. Mm -hmm. hey, I ain't playing the last of the, of the finals. Fuck all that, it don't fucking matter, as long as we win. Yeah. As, long as, as long as we win. So when you got players that know, we all internally know, and then we see the motherfuckers trying to trap you in the corner over there, mm -hmm. and it's uncomfortable already because we know what you're going we through. Know, yeah, we know you can't say nothing. You, we know. We, know you, we know you pissed, too. It's like, hey, look, you and Steve need to go fight it out. <laughs> you and Steve need to go in that boxer match. Hey, hey, hey. You and Steve How come we to... never get no, have you noticed we never get no quotes from Curry, right? They don't play that with Curry. Have you noticed that? You never, they never jam up with Curry. Steph busy never signing play. autographs. Yeah, don't play that him. shit. Uh, it's, Steph, always, it's always the one who's struggling. Yeah. Steph busy signing autographs, doing interviews with Yes Network. <laughs> that was the wildest shit. He did an interview with the, the opposing team's crew. <laughs> like, we didn't want to talk to nobody about our shit. They had got Kaminga when he was struggling with the, with mm -hmm. the, yeah. with the, uh, with with the, the minutes sitting. and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah but they, the, but, they went but, try to trap him. But that's, but that's why when... You know, players are doing their podcast now. You're learning more about the player themselves. They're giving you more information because we are going to limit the information media gives. Yes. Right? We're going to limit it. We're not going to give you, we're not going to give them Amazing. nothing. Because look what you do with it. You try to trap us into a clickbait situation mm -hmm. where now we look bad for telling the truth that you wanted us to tell mm -hmm. instead of being politically correct in a business setting. It's called work ethic and work, work ethics. Ethics. We it, have ethics here. It goes it's both wrong. ways, though, right? It do. The athletes. Do, I think let me, it's decreased. Do, in the media. You do. You do a show. You can. You. You can convey things I'm, however I'm a, you want. Okay. Right? That's, that's your narrative. Whatever the situation is, right? Mm -hmm. That may not be the actual fact. I watched the Last Dance, and I watched MJ do a lot of sneaky shit in that thing. Right. I'm just saying the propelling elevated. We talked about all the good shit. We're not really hitting. Right. The other shit, but that's right. just a part of life. So you got to have some level of balance, though. No, the balance is. This is why it's not really a balance. If you take 460 players, right, let's just say 450 NBA players, and you say, all right, guys, you do not have to talk to the media after the game. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think you're going to have Katie, Clay, and all those guys speaking to the media after games? No, there's the reason... You have to find them is because naturally they do not want to talk to them. So that means you will have to fight, which is a fine. If you don't talk to media, they're going to complain. Well, Curry didn't want to talk to me today. He ran out of the locker room. You are going to find the player himself because he doesn't want to talk to someone who's going to agitate him. Yep. Right? So you technically are putting the player themselves into a stressful atmosphere yep. after he just finished a stressful game. Yep. So in reality... The media has that advantage because they know if you leave here without talking to me, I'm going to report you and then you're going to find me. So there's no balance. There's no balance because the balance is offset by a fine. Because if you didn't find me, you're, you're never, you, 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 motherfucker, I'm like Michael Jackson. But no, no, you would. You, you barely might, one, two, maybe. You would, don't, <laughs> now, think about the, the chances that they do have of talking to players is after the win, yeah. and I had a good game, mm -hmm. I'm on the court, <laughs> my towel over my neck, and I'm Kevin Durant, and now we just hit, we just won, I just hit two shots to take us up and win, right? Kevin, we need to talk to you for a second. All right, now. It's up to Kevin's discernment now to look at who's asking him questions. Mm -hmm. I don't like this motherfucker. Well, that's that, but that's the other side of it too. If y'all not really rolling, who's asking you questions? I'm giving you a bullshit answer. If I'm rolling with this, no, I'm not doing person. nothing with you. Period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm Kevin Durant and I got a choice, like Gil said, to talk to the media or not, 
I'm only going to talk to the guy I know is a good guy who's not trying to spin shit. He's going to give me real good questions. We talk about basketball and what just happened on the court. We're not talking about nothing else. So I feel comfortable well, talking to you. Sure. Steph Curry, Devin Booker, they'll all stop and talk. Jason Tatum. Yeah, yeah. But if you're going to ask me some bullshit, nah, I'm cool. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. You got to have to find one of these big <laughs> Both yeah, teams right. played hard. Yeah. But that got them fine. Both like, teams played like hard. Like Marshawn Lynch. Yep. NBA, yeah, that's you find in the NBA yeah. doing that. Yep. You find in the NBA. You know why I'm here. Find. <laughs> they gonna, they gonna stop that. I'm that just here so I don't get fine. Yeah. Be oh, beautiful moment. Y'all remember like Russell Westbrook, right? When he was doing the interview. I don't know if you've seen it. It was like, it was some dude that he, you can see he do not like this dude. Yeah. Right? And he'll say something. Yeah, huh? Uh, and then the lady asked him, hey, you know, there was a turnaround fadeaway jump shot you did. And that was immaculate. And the smile that came on his face like, oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah that, that's in my repertoire. <laughs> Thank you for asking. What's your name? Give her a raise. Like, he was, but so, yeah. so he wants to answer the good shit, right? No, I but everybody in I'm, life, when it's some good that happened to us, of course I want to talk about it. If it's some bad shit, yeah, leave me but alone. they don't but, always t want to talk about the good shit. But, that's what we're saying is like, it's just overwhelming. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, because like, you know that society doesn't want to hear all the good, good shit. Stuff. Oh, of course. They not. only want to hear the bullshit, which is why media always asks controversial questions. Society which is why, off negativity. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> why do you think I go viral most of the time? Because I'm always making the fucking controversial takes. I'm saying the bullshit. Take the well researched. Come on, man. All right, well, let's keep this thing moving on to our last segment of the day. Mostly fans. Presented by Underdog Fantasy. If you have not done so already, download the app. Use promo code GILD. They will match your first deposit up to $100. We got some text questions, video questions. We love giving bread on this show, giving back to the community, giving back to the people. As always, appreciate you to everybody in the chat who pulls up every day religiously. I think everyone has gotten paid besides number three and number five. Whoever three and five was, we'll get, I don't think their cash apps are working. Nobody's bothered me yet, so that means that the oh, number, yeah. why Gil ain't paid me? I, that's uh -huh. a great question for uh -huh. Gilbert and Rita. <laughs> just and everybody else out there, <laughs> just, just quickly, Damn, for, before we start Bosey fans, this is Gilbert. If you need to get in touch with Gilbert, Gilbert. holler at Gilbert. See, they be trying to go through us and be hey, like, hey, man, you should uh, do this question. And yeah, tell Gilbert. I don't, I don't, tell I don't, Gilbert. I don't look at DMs. I don't give a fuck what you're talking about. <laughs> like, I can't Gilbert. call this dude. Man. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking, I cannot I'm looking, call listen. this man. I have to text him and I'm, tell him I'm by the phone. I'm looking for certain call. things. I'm looking for certain things. Yeah, where that new dad. Oh, okay. That's right. I say the same ah. thing. I don't want to talk to no dudes in here. Y'all <laughs> niggas leave me alone, man. Gil does not accept me. incoming phone calls, as you already know. If we need to chat, he'll hit me. I probably won't pick up. So I'm doing something. I'll text him back, Gil. I'm yeah, by the phone yeah, right so now. So, 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 by the phone. Yeah, so that means you can't call me and put the record on and try to activate. Nah, nah, nah. Mm -hmm. ah, don't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -mm. So our first question is from a gentleman who has not yet got down with Underdog Fantasy, but we're hoping he gets his mind right because he will get $100 if he does create an account and send it in. What do y'all think about Jason Tatum constantly comparing himself to Kobe? And um, do you like the confidence or do you feel like he hasn't proved himself to be on the Mamba level yet? Appreciate it. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> so as a reminder, Doing this while you're driving. We appreciate y'all <laughs> questions. We appreciate the love. Please pull the car over. Put it in park. Well, you ask started. your question. Get back about you your driving. He didn't hit hidden bumps. Oh, my bad. So fuck, man. <laughs> That's a good edit. That's a good edit. <laughs> I respect multitaskers. It's an important part of life. I know you had a Pull career. the car over. Put it in park. Ask your question. Take 30 seconds. You can get back about your day. Unless, obviously, you got a meeting with some work and you're late. That's the only caveat. <laughs> But announced that in the video. But back to the question, what do y'all think about Jason Tatum constantly comparing himself to Kobe? He does? Yeah, I didn't, I mean. I thought other people did that for him, was doing that for him. Like, I, mm -hmm. I know he did that special promo where he, he put the Kobe jersey on, which, yeah. like, I don't, I don't, I don't, listen, I don't mind him comparing himself to Kobe because we don't know, He's not comparing himself to Kobe and, and the accolades of, oh, he's an all-star, he's a NBA champion, three-time NBA champion. He's probably talking about this is the trajectory that I'm trying to put myself in, like, you know, Kobe with Michael Jordan, right? This is who I compare myself to. Yeah. Greatness, 
right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to take myself, I'm not going to compare myself to this guy or this guy because this is not considered GOATs, right? So no, I do not want to be compared to, I want to be compared to that guy right there. That is the Mamba, that's Mamba mentality. That's who I compare myself to. And as long as I'm walking under the same path, Kobe yeah. mentor Tatum. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah that's like, so I get it. This is where it's coming from. I mean, a lot of people don't like confidence. Period. When you, when you don't have confidence. <laughs> Number one, people who fucking don't have confidence hate seeing it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Period. So Jason Tatum is not going around saying, "Oh, I'm comparing myself to Kobe." I'm telling you guys what he taught me. I'm showing you what he taught me, and I'm telling you, told me. I'm doing what the guy told me to do and y'all are seeing it in real time, and I'm giving him homage not only by saying that this is what he taught me, but how can you not compare it to him? Because he taught me this. So I love, even if he's, like I know he's not comparing himself to Kobe, I know he's paying homage, but the fact that he taught him certain things that he's carrying over into his game, that's why I keep Kobe in this light because you can't die off somebody who is a teacher, a master teacher. He wants to live on forever through the words of what he's done and what he wants to share. And that's what I would love for LeBron to do. Share your intellect and all of these things. I would love for Kevin Durant to share all the things that made you great. This is what brings us to the next generation, sharing. Mm -hmm. But that one guy who did, you see Paul George's game translate. You see Devin Booker's game translate. See, all these guys who work with Kobe. Mm -hmm. The mentality is the number one thing he always talked about. Translate through how we play the game and what mental approach we come to. And I love it. Yeah, I love it. Me too. Sure, let's move on to our next question from Underdog User. Why three official? Yo, what's up, Gills Arena? All-star question. So should the NBA go MLB style and make the players play for home court advantage in the finals? Would that fix all the issues with weak game play in the All-Stars? And uh, this uh, second question is actually random. Who had the best wave game, the best wave game <laughs> in the NBA when y'all played? What's up? Send that man $200 and, and secondly, he was watching Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy in the background. Shout out. I'm just, I'm just wondering, you know, he got a face tattoo where he work at. Just, that's just one. That's just weird. You know, I just picked up. Okay, but besides that. Chill out. No, no, I'm just besides that. Um, yeah, you can't ask him. You can't be a journalist. No, no, no I'm, just, I'm just, like you that. know. <laughs> <laughs> Those are intrusive questions. Go ahead and hit him with now, it. Now, what if he asked you? <laughs> that's a rebuttal in real time. <laughs> like, so... <laughs> So, M so MLB, so MLB. So from 2003 to 2016, uh, whoever won the MLB All-Star Game, whatever conference, I think they got league. league, they got the home court advantage. Nigga, this is a basketball show. I don't not give a fuck about baseball. Wait, what you <laughs> Other than Jackie <laughs> Robinson and Roberto Clemente. Because they East plays, so he's talking about in the finals? So if the East and the West All-Star Game, let's say the East wins, and then the, the, the East team that goes to the finals will get home court advantage. Mm. Oh, that would be cool. Mm. That would be cool. Okay, I but, mean that would be cool, but you know, let, let's just say, how many players from Boston made it to made it? How many? Yeah, that's the difference. Imagine it's two, play, two players, players from the players Boston. Like now you got what? Well, now you got the rest up. of the players, right? You know, playing hard for these two motherfuckers if they really got a shame and we don't. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't care what you got. This is my first off, so I'm trying to have a break. Goddamn it! I don't really care what you get on quarterback. Man. Would you? Would you <laughs> sabotage? Like, we'll fuck the niggas in Boston. Nah. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, when you know you're on the road. Hell to make the finals. Like, I'm trying to help them win. I got yeah. Like I mean, if you really want to pump, if you really want to pump it up, just make one grand prize. Just one grand prize, right? Every player gets the money. Loser gets nothing. Mm. That changes it. Like I don't know why you give me. If you give me money to participate, fucker, I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna participate. <laughs> I'm participating. Get what about? I'm on, I, listen, I'm on, I'm on a, on a bench just like, hey, what's up, Beyonce? That's what I say, that's what I say, that's I don't care about what's running up and down. Hey, what if we do this? Yeah, hey, half the time is we, we, we got our phones in that motherfucker like, taking pictures and shit, yeah, we taking pictures and We don't care. We gonna flip that's our coin. Wait, that's what they five, five million dollars to the fucking winner. That, that's what they was doing, WB also game. They was live tweeting. 
So yeah, because it's a, it's it's vac it's a vacation. Right. Yeah. Everybody else who don't make it is there on vacation, getting a mental break. We're in the same mode. We just have obligations. Now the problem comes with if you want the obligations to turn into some real shit, make it some real shit. Yeah. So get with turn it. Turn it like five million for the winner. Five million. Lose against nothing. Man. But who won? Oh, it? hold on. Wait, who won? Wait, it? Five said, million. What, what if you go five million for the winner, but the loser has got to play it, pay it from their their salary? Ooh. Oh, Ooh. You're not gonna play hard. Ooh. You're not gonna play hard. Ooh. I'm not playing. Period. You're not gonna. Ah. <laughs> You're not flipping no, that coin, Gil. You know why? No, it's Flip that coin, Gil. No, 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 everybody who's coin. participating no, no. in the game has to put in something that equates to No, 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 no because if I'm the East team and I got to look at my team <laughs> to pull out. I need ah, it. Yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, I, I got Derek White. I got Derek White. I got Derek White coming off the bench. Reserved. He's going to get He's going against Curry. My leg hurt, Gil. I'm a... For Boston, you need to relax. What I'm saying, I'm gonna take the All Star bid, but I don't want to be part of this game. Knowing my this East team look weak as fuck compared to that West team. You gotta stop. Man, I'm just saying. Them, I'm just saying. My Celtics, man. Y'all cost me money. But you talking about? It's never gonna be competitive. But if you're like talking about five, five million, you put five million in the front. Boom, winner takes all. Guarantee you, they're gonna be playing different. For sure. For sure. That's fair. For sure. All right. And second question: Who had the best wave game in the NBA when you played? I don't know. 360s, 358s, what I mean? Somebody who didn't, like, okay, well, I said this before. I said, if you have waves in the NBA, you probably wasn't that dude. Because it takes, the reason is, if I tell you every NBA player, I give you the, the, the 100 best, greatest players of all time, and you pull out three dudes with waves, you prove my point. Right. You pull out three dudes with waves, you prove the point. Because, yeah, there's an exception to the rule that, yeah, there's going to be some players that had waves at some point, right? You're going to have a Paul George who had waves one year. But eventually, a dude who's sitting there with waves, sitting here doing this all day, worrying about his his flow, yeah, yeah, game ain't like that, bro. Right? The group, someone who has the Louis Vuitton outfit on and, 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 and uh, you've seen it, he come to the gym in workouts, right? And he got the Louis Vuitton, you know, Everything. basketball short Louis Vuitton. Bro, you didn't come here to work out, man. Get out of here, yeah, Who bro. you came here to look good You got for, jewelry man. on, yeah, ball. Ain't nobody paying attention yeah. to your trash. So think, Chad think, is saying Joe Johnson, Darren Williams. T-Mac yeah. had some waves. Yeah, T-Mac, he had them for a full, full day in four hours. Probably Darren Williams. Probably. Darren Williams, that's what I'm saying, the light-skinned dudes yeah. with the good hair. Good hair. Right, yeah. that's just automatic. That's he ain't, not, yeah. okay. It ain't even waves. It ain't waves. <laughs> like, like, he ain't listen, put no grease in that thing. That's water. Like Tatum, like Tatum. You cut his hair. He got natural hair. water. Like me, me. I got to brush a little bit. If I get my regular haircut, I probably have a little waves. But for me to get wave waves, I'm bald. I got to work. I'm not work. I'm I got bald. shit to do. I had the Kevin Durant take. Oh, I, I had to get rid of. I got shit I had to the do. KD. I had the KD. I had the real nigga slave <laughs> hair, boy. I had to cut my shit. <laughs> That's why you don't play. KD, KD can't even go to the barber, nigga. That's what I'm saying. You talking about that shit. There's a difference between waves and dudes that just got that texture. Yeah, it is. They got the feet, they got the Indian in their family. Coutinho, Coutinho had a little bit of way. Yeah, the Indian, but, yeah. you know, like you said. You know, the Lance Stevenson? Dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you did this, we looking at you like, hey, man. You, you got waves like. You got the brush in your back pocket. pocket. You know what I mean? He ain't coming to hoop, dog. Chicago. He keep it on the motherfucking bench, too. It's on the bench. Let me get that brush. Let me get that brush. Get that brush. <laughs> yeah, like, that's the thing. You got that brush. Like, come on, dog. We trying to play the game. You over here. and dreads and twists now. They just hoop. They lazy. That's all. Lazy, lazy. Yeah, lazy. Like NBA, like most, like okay, uh, <laughs> what Brandon Ingram is going through <laughs> is exactly the mood, right? When the season starts, it's grind. We think grind time, yep. right? So most players like oh, it's grind time. So you know during the week time, unless you like like somebody like Jalen Rose who like you know he's taking pictures all the time. Mm -hmm. Getting your lineup done all the time, I mean, that just becomes a headache. Because what happens is you're on the road so much, you don't trust the barbers there. For you to really get haircuts like that, and then if you do, hey yo, I'm going to New York. Hey, hey, you you got a barber here that I can I can mess with? Hey, Rashad, you admit hey, you got a barber you can deal with? So then you become relying on other players. For the most part, it's like, eh, I just let my shit grow out. So I'll say 
the same way that y'all feel about haircuts. That's how we feel about our hair. That's why it's always braided up or in a weave or something, because that shit mm. takes time. Mm, but we can't get a weave. Y'all, y'all cheating. That's it's it, not cheating. It is. You've Jimmy seen Butler. Hair. It's not cheating. No, no, it's that's cheating if you got Make somebody else's hair. Better. We don't get to put nobody else's hair in our hair. You can. Mm. We don't. Because yes, it's hard. Do. It's difficult. We, uh, we it's a difficulty. We need more to get it's the a difficulty. There's a lot of people. Get the man unit. We need more man it's units in the difficult. NBA. But if you a fly, if you if you fly and you proud yourself like on getting girls, you gonna always have a lineup. Yeah, have in one. the middle of the game, like you you, you worried about looking pretty. Yeah. Yeah, we are too. We're like, hey, yeah, she yeah. got to see this lineup. Yeah, TNT, she like, got to see this lineup. Like TNT, certain games, you know, if we yeah, like, well, yeah, like we'll, my hair gotta be. We'll try to get a lineup, but, but for the most part, like, it's, it's, it's mine. It's, it's, hard. it's, yeah. it's a grime. Re man. Regional game, you know. But when tripping. we working, when we working for the work, yeah. gotta get That's that lineup. Like, like Brandon Ingram looks exactly what the most NBA player look like. Okay, he's going through something. Going through something. <laughs> right. Jeez. He ain't got time. I ain't got time to be get worrying about no haircut, dog. I'm trying to get to the buckets. Mm -mm. Roll up. Smoke uh, something. Uh. <laughs> and this has been <laughs> another exciting day in Guild Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. As always, we appreciate y'all tapping in with us. If you have not done so already, download the Underdog Fantasy app. Use promo code. Lunch Gil. on Lexi. They will match your first deposit <laughs> of the $100. Congrats again. Yeah. Lexi, get some guaranteed bread right. from the Spark. Right. We got that. Hey, we will yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, I found this on TikTok. I'm playing uh, NBA Jams Tournament Edition okay. on the and little Game Boy. And whoever, and hey, we need whoever whoever design is, you know, we sponsor. We need a bunch of those. Send, send them over. Send them no, over. Send the cool. video. Send them All over. All right, we will see y'all on Wednesday. Whoa, whoa. Yeah.